Hey, are you guys ready for some more learning? Today we are doing road signs and traffic signs. So again, this test has 50 questions. There is only one correct answer and you need to get 43 out of 50 correct. So let's begin with the first question. How can you identify traffic signs that give orders? A, they are circular with a red border. B, they are rectangular with a yellow border. C, they are square with a brown border. Or D, they are triangular with a blue border. Are you ready for the countdown? Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is... A, they are circular with a red border. Explanation. There are three basic types of traffic signs. Those that warn, those that inform, and those that give orders. Generally, triangular signs warn, rectangular signs give information or directions, and circular signs give orders. An exception is the eight-sided stop sign. Next question. What shape are the traffic signs giving orders? Shape A, shape B, shape C, or shape D. And let's begin the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is the explanation. Road signs in the shape of a circle give orders. Those with a red circle are mostly prohibitive. The stop sign is octagonal to give it greater prominence. Signs giving orders must always be obeyed. Next question. Which type of sign tells you what you must not do? Sign A, sign B, sign C, or sign D? Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is A. Explanation. Signs in the shape of a circle give orders. A sign with a red circle means that you are not allowed to do something. Study, know your traffic signs to make sure that you understand what the different traffic signs mean. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. 20 cars only parking zone. B. Maximum speed limit with traffic calming. C. Minimum speed limit with traffic calming. Or D. Only 20 cars allowed at any one time. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Maximum speed limit with traffic calming. Explanation. If you are in a place where there are likely to be pedestrians, for example, outside the school, near a park, in a residential area, or in a shopping area, you should be cautious and keep your speed down. Many local authorities have taken steps to slow traffic down by creating traffic calming measures such as road humps. They are there for a reason. Slow down. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. End of 20 miles per hour zone. B. Minimum speed limit 30 miles per hour. C. New speed limit 20 miles per hour. D. No vehicles over 30 tons. And let's start with the countdown. Five, four, three, two, 
one. And the correct answer is A, end of 20 miles per hour zone. Explanation. Where you see this sign, the 20 miles per hour restriction ends and the 30 miles per hour restriction starts. Check all around for possible hazards and only increase your speed if it's safe to do so. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Cars and motorcycles only. B. Clear way, no stopping. C. No motor vehicles. D. No overtaking. And the countdown begins now. Five. Four, three, two, one. The correct answer is C, no motor vehicles. Explanation. A sign will indicate which type of vehicles are prohibited from certain roads. Make sure that you know which signs apply to the vehicle you are using. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. No entry. B. No parking. C. No road markings. Or D. No through road. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A. No entry. Explanation. No entry signs are used in places such as one-way streets to prevent vehicles driving against the traffic. To ignore one would be dangerous both for yourself and for other road users as well as being against the law. Let's carry on with the next question. What does this sign mean? A. Bend to the right. B no right turn, C, no traffic from the right, or D, road on the right closed. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is B, no right turn. Explanation. The no right turn sign may be used to warn road users that there is a no entry prohibition on a road to the right ahead. Next question. Which sign means no entry? Sign A, sign B, sign C, or sign D? Let's begin the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D. Explanation. Look for and obey traffic signs. Disobeying or not seeing a sign could be dangerous. It may also be an offense for which you could be prosecuted. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Parking for buses only. B. Parking for trams only. C. Route for buses only. Or D. Route for trams only. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is D. Route for trams only. Explanation. Avoid blocking tram routes. Trams are fixed on their route and cannot maneuver around other vehicles or pedestrians. Modern trams travel quickly and they are quiet, so you might not hear them approaching. Next question. Which type of vehicle does this sign apply to? A. Heavy vehicles. B. High vehicles. C. Long vehicles or D. Wide vehicles. And the countdown starts now. Five, four, 
three, two, one. And the correct answer is B, high vehicles. Explanation. The triangular shapes above and below the dimensions indicate a height restriction that applies to the road ahead. Next question. Which sign means no motor vehicles allowed? Sign A, sign B, sign C, or sign D? Five, four, Three, two, one, and the correct answer is B. Explanation. This sign is used to enable pedestrians to walk free from traffic. It's often found in shopping areas. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. No motor vehicles, B, no overtaking, C, two-way traffic, or D, you have priority. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is B, no overtaking. Explanation. Road signs that prohibit overtaking are placed in locations where passing the vehicle in front is dangerous. If you see this sign, do not attempt to overtake. The sign is there for a reason. You must obey it. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Clear way, no stopping. B. National speed limit applies. C. Waiting permitted. D, waiting restrictions apply. Let's begin the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D, waiting restrictions apply. Explanation. There will be a plate or additional sign to tell you when the restrictions apply. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. End of clearway. B. End of cycle route. C. End of restricted parking area. Or D. End of restricted speed area. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is. C, end of restricted parking area. Explanation. Even though you've left the restricted area, make sure that you park where you won't endanger other road users or cause an obstruction. Next question. Which sign means no stopping? Sign A, sign B, Sign C or sign D. And let's start with the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is B. Explanation. Stopping where this clear way restriction applies is likely to cause congestion. Allow the traffic to flow by obeying the signs. Next question. What does this sign mean? It might seem like it's repeating itself, but it's not repeating itself. So, you know. A. National speed limit applies. B. No entry. C. No stopping. Or D. Waiting restrictions apply. Five. Four. Three, two, one. The correct answer is C, no stopping. Explanation. This is the sign for a clear way. Clear ways are stretches of road where you aren't allowed to stop unless it's an emergency. 
Stopping where these restrictions apply may be dangerous and is likely to cause an obstruction. Restrictions might apply for several miles and this may be indicated on the sign. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Distance to parking place ahead. B. Distance to passing place ahead. C. Distance to public house ahead. Or D. Distance to public telephone ahead. Let's start the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is A. Distance to parking place ahead. Explanation. If you intend to stop and rest, this sign allows you time to reduce speed and pull over safely. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Vehicles may not park on the verge or footway. B. Vehicles may park fully on the verge or footway. C. Vehicles may park on the left on the left hand side of the road only or D vehicles may park on the right hand side of the road only and the countdown five four three two one the correct answer is B Vehicles may park fully on the verge or footway. Explanation In order to keep roads free from parked cars, there are some areas where you are allowed to park on the verge. Only do this where you see the sign. Parking on verges or footways anywhere else could lead to a fine. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Give priority to oncoming traffic. B. No overtaking allowed. C. One-way traffic only. D. Two-way traffic. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is... A. Give priority to oncoming traffic. Explanation. Priority signs are normally shown where the road is narrow and there isn't enough room for two vehicles to pass. Examples are narrow bridges, roadworks and where there is a width restriction. Make sure you know who has priority. Don't force your way through. Show courtesy and consideration to other road users. Next question. What's the meaning of these traffic signs? Of this traffic sign? A. Bus lane ahead. B. End of two-way road. C. Give priority to vehicles coming towards you. D. You have priority over vehicles coming towards you. 5. Four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is you have priority over vehicles coming towards you. Explanation. Don't force your way through. Show courtesy and consideration to other road users. Although you have priority, make sure oncoming traffic is going to give way before you continue. Next question. What shape is a stop sign? Shape A, shape B, shape C, or shape D? Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D. Explanation. To make it easy to recognize, the stop sign is the only sign of this shape. You must stop and take effective observation before proceeding. 
Next question. In winter, road signs can become covered by snow. What does this sign mean? A. Crossroads. B. Give way. C. Stop. Or D. Turn right. Let's start the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is C. Stop. Explanation. The stop sign is the only road sign that's octagonal. This is so that it can be recognized and obeyed even if it's obscured, for example, by snow. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Lay by 30 miles ahead. B. Maximum speed 30 miles per hour. B, C. Minimum speed 30 miles per hour or D, service area 30 miles ahead. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is C, minimum speed 30 miles per hour. Explanation. This sign is shown where slow moving vehicles would impede the flow of traffic. For example, in tunnels. However, if you need to slow down or even stop to avoid an incident or a potential collision, you should do so. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Approaching traffic passes you on both sides. B. Give way to oncoming vehicles. C. Pass either side to get to the same destination. D. Turn off at the next available junction. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is C. Pass either side to get to the same destination. Explanation. These signs are often seen in one-way streets that have more than one lane. When you see this sign, use the route that's the most convenient and doesn't require a late change of direction. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Give way to buses. B. Give way to trams. C. Route for buses. Or D. Route for trams. And the countdown begins now. Five. Four. Three, two, one. The correct answer is the route for trams. Explanation. Take extra care when you encounter trams. Look out for road markings and signs that alert you to them. Modern trams are very quiet and you may not hear them approaching. Next question. What messages are given by circular traffic signs that have a blue background? A. They give directions to car parks. B. They give mandatory instructions. C. They give motorway information. Or D. They give temporary directions during a diversion. 5, 4, 3, 2, one, the correct answer is B, they give mandatory instructions. Explanation, signs with blue circles generally give mandatory instructions. These are often found in urban areas and include signs for mini roundabouts and directional arrows. Next question, where would you see a contraflow bus lane? A. On a dual carriageway. B. On a one-way street. C. On a roundabout. Or D. On an urban motorway. Let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is B. On a one-way street. Explanation. 
The traffic permitted to use a contraflow lane travels in the opposite direction to traffic in the other lanes on the road. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Bus station on the right. B. Contraflow bus lane. C. Give way to buses. Or D. White flow bus lane. 5. 4. 3, 2, 1, and the correct answer is B, contraflow bus lane. Explanation. There will also be markings on the road surface to indicate the bus lane. You mustn't use this lane for parking or overtaking. Next question. What does a sign with a brown background show? A. Minor roads, B. Motorway routes, C. Primary roads, or D. Tourist directions. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is D. Tourist directions. Explanation. Signs with a brown background give directions to places of interest. They are often seen on a motorway, directing you along the easiest route to the attraction. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Beware of trains. B. Beware of trams. C. Level crossing. Or D. Tourist attraction. Let's start the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is the tourist attraction. Explanation. These signs indicate places of interest and are designed to guide you by the easiest route. They are particularly useful when you are unfamiliar with the area. Next question. What's the purpose of triangular shaped signs? A, to give directions. B, to give information. C, to give orders. Or D, to give warnings. Five, four, three, two, one and the correct answer is d to give warnings explanation triangular signs warns you of hazards ahead make sure you look at each sign that you pass on the road so that you don't miss any vital instructions or information next question what does this sign mean a. Give way. B. No through road. C. T junction. Or D. Turn left ahead. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is C. T junction. Explanation. This type of sign warns you of hazards ahead. Make sure you look at each sign and road markings that you pass so that you don't miss any vital instructions or information. This sign shows there is a T-junction with priority over vehicles from the right. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Multi-exit roundabout, B. Place of historical interest, C. Risk of ice, or D. Six roads converge. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is C. Risk of ice. Explanation. 
it will take up to 10 times longer to stop when it's icy. Where there is a risk of icy conditions, you need to be aware of this and take extra care. If you think the road may be icy, don't brake or steer harshly as your tires could lose their grip on the road. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Ahead only. B. Crossroads. C. Level crossing with gate. D. Level crossing without gate. Let's start the countdown. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. The correct answer is B. Crossroads. Explanation. The priority through the junction is shown by the broader line. You need to be aware of the hazard posed by traffic crossing or pulling out onto a major road. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Mini roundabout. B. No vehicles. C. Ring road. Or D. Roundabout. Let's start the countdown. 5. 4. 3, 2, 1, and the correct answer is the roundabout explanation. As you approach a roundabout, look well ahead and check all signs. Decide which exit you wish to take and move into the correct position as you approach the roundabout, signaling as required. Next question. What information would be shown in a triangular road sign? A. Ahead only. B. Keep left. C. Minimum speed. Or D. Road narrows. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is D. Road narrows. Explanation. Warning signs are there to make you aware of potential hazards on the road ahead. Take note of the signs so you are prepared and so you can take whatever action is necessary. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Cycle in a single file. B. Cycle route ahead. C. Cycles aren't allowed or D, cyclists must dismount. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is B, cycle route ahead. Explanation. Where there is a cycle route ahead, a sign will show a bicycle in a red warning triangle. Watch out for children on bicycles and cyclists rejoining the main road. Next question. Which sign means that pedestrians may be walking along the road? Sign A, sign B, sign C, or sign D? Five, four, three, Two, one. The correct answer is A. Explanation. When you pass pedestrians in the road, leave plenty of room. You might have to use the right hand side of the road, so look well ahead, as well as in your mirrors before pulling out. Take great care if the bend in the road obscures your view ahead. Next question. Which sign means there is a double band ahead? Sign A, sign B, sign C, or sign D? Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is B. Explanation. Triangular signs give you a warning of hazards ahead. 
They are there to give you time to prepare for the hazard. For example, by adjusting your speed. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Give way to farm vehicles. B. Give way to trams. C. Wait at the barriers. D. Wait at the crossroads. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is B. Give way to trams. Explanation. Obey the give way signs. Trams are unable to steer around you if you misjudge when it's safe to enter the junction. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Entrance to tunnel. B. Humps bridge. C. Humps in the road. Or D. Soft verges. Five. Four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is C, humps in the road. Explanation. These humps have been put in place to slow the traffic down. They are usually found in residential areas. Slow down to an appropriate speed. Next question. Which sign means the end of a dual carriageway? Sign A, sign B, sign C, or sign D? Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D. Explanation. If you are overtaking, make sure you move back safely into the left-hand lane before you reach the end of the dual carriageway. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. End of dual carriageway. B. End of narrow bridge. C. Road narrows. Or D. Tall bridge. Let's begin the countdown. Five, four, three, five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is A, end of dual carriageway. Explanation. Don't wait until the last moment before moving into the left-hand lane. Plan ahead and don't rely on other traffic letting you in. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Adverse camber. B. Airport. C. Road noise. Or D. Side winds. Let's begin the countdown. Five. Four, three, two, one. The correct answer is the side winds explanation. A warning sign with a picture of a windsock indicates that there may be strong side winds. This sign is often found on exposed roads. Next question. What does this traffic sign mean? A. Danger ahead. B. Service area ahead. C. Slippery road ahead. D. Tires liable to punctures ahead. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is A danger ahead explanation this sign is there to alert you to the likelihood of danger ahead it may be accompanied by a plate indicating the type of hazard be ready to reduce your speed and take avoiding action next question 
you are about to overtake. What should you do when you see this sign? A, hold back until you can see clearly ahead. B, move to the right to get a better view. C, overtake the other driver as quickly as possible. Or D, switch your headlights on before overtaking. Let's begin the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is A, hold back until you can see clearly ahead. Explanation. You won't be able to see any hazards that might be hidden in the deep. As well as oncoming traffic, the deep may conceal cyclists, horse riders, parked vehicles, or even pedestrians in the road. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Cattle grid ahead. B. Gated road ahead. C. Level crossing with gate or barrier. D. Level crossing without gate or barrier. Let's begin the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is C. Level crossing with gate or barrier. Explanation. Some crossings have gates but no attendance or signals. You should stop, look both ways, listen and make sure that no train is approaching. If there is a telephone, contact the signal operator to make sure it's safe to cross. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. No trams ahead. B. Oncoming trams. C. Trams crossing ahead. Or D. Trams only. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Trams crossing ahead. Explanation. This sign tells you to beware of trams. If you don't usually drive in a town where there are trams, remember to look out for them at junctions and look for tram rails, signs and signals. Next question and the last one for today's test. What does this sign mean? A. Adverse camber. B. Steep hill downwards. C. Steep hill upwards. D. Uneven road. And the countdown begins now. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is B. Steep hill downwards. Explanation. This sign gives you an early warning that the road ahead will slope downhill. Prepare to alter your speed and gear. Looking at the sign from left to right will show you whether the road slopes uphill or downhill. Thank you guys so much for staying with me and thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe and i will see you in the next one for now take care bye one which road user has caused a hazard the car turning arrow d the moving car arrow c the parked car arrow a the pedestrian waiting to cross arrow b correct answer the parked car arrow a Explanation. The car arrow A is parked within the area marked by zigzag lines at the pedestrian crossing. Parking here is illegal. It also blocks the view for pedestrians wishing to cross the road, restricts the view of the crossing for approaching traffic. 2. What should the driver of the grey car be especially aware of? Doors opening on parked cars. Empty parking spaces. The uneven road surface. 
Traffic following behind. Correct answer. Doors opening on parked cars. Explanation. When passing parked cars, there's a risk that a driver or passenger may not check before opening the door into the road. A defensive driver will drive slowly and be looking for people who may be about to get out of their car. 3. What should you expect if you see this sign ahead? The road will bend sharply to the left. The road will bend sharply to the right. The road will go steeply downhill. The road will go steeply uphill. Correct answer. The road will bend sharply to the left. Explanation. This sign indicates that the road will bend sharply to the left. Slow down in plenty of time and select the correct gear before you start to turn. Braking hard and late, while also sharply changing direction, is likely to cause a skid. 4. What should you do as you approach this cyclist? Flash your headlights at the cyclist. Rev your engine so the cyclist knows you're following behind. Slow down and allow the cyclist to turn. Try to overtake before the cyclist gets to the junction. Correct answer. Slow down and allow the cyclist to turn. Explanation. Keep well back and give the cyclist time and room to turn safely. Don't intimidate them by getting too close or trying to squeeze past. 5. What should you do if you want to turn left at a junction where pedestrians have started to cross? Give way to them. Go around them, leaving plenty of room. Sound your horn and proceed. Stop and wave at them to cross. Correct answer. Give way to them. Explanation. When you're turning into a side road, pedestrians who are crossing have priority. You should wait to allow them to finish crossing safely. Be patient if they're slow or unsteady. Don't try to rush them by sounding your horn, flashing your lights, revving your engine or giving any other inappropriate signal. 6. Why should you check for motorcyclists just before turning right into a side road? They may be emerging from the side road. They may be following you closely. They may be overtaking on your left. They may be overtaking on your right. Correct answer. They may be overtaking on your right. Explanation. Never attempt to change direction to the right without first checking your right-hand mirror and blind spot. A motorcyclist might not have seen your signal and could be hidden by other traffic. This observation should become a matter of routine. 7. Which is the most vulnerable road user? Car driver. Lorry driver. Motorcyclist. Tractor driver. Correct answer. Motorcyclist. Explanation. Pedestrians and riders on two wheels can be harder to see than other road users. Make sure you look for them, especially at junctions. Effective observation, coupled with appropriate action, can save lives. 8. You're approaching a roundabout. What should you do if there are horses being ridden in front of you? Accelerate past as quickly as possible. Give them plenty of room. Sound your horn as a warning. Treat them like any other vehicle. Correct answer. Give them plenty of room. Explanation. Horse riders often keep to the outside of the roundabout even if they're turning right. Give them plenty of room and remember that they may have to cross lanes of traffic. 9. You're following a lorry on a wet road. What should you do when spray makes it difficult to see the road ahead? Drop back until you can see better. Keep close to the lorry, away from the spray. Put your headlights on full beam. Speed up and overtake quickly. Correct answer. Drop back until you can see better. Explanation. Large vehicles can throw up a lot of spray when it's wet. 
This makes it difficult for drivers behind to see the road ahead. You'll be able to see more by dropping back further, out of the spray. This will also increase your separation distance, giving you more room to stop if you have to. 10. When may you wait in a box junction? When approaching a pelican crossing. When approaching a zebra crossing. When oncoming traffic prevents you turning right. When you're stationary in a queue of traffic. Correct answer, when oncoming traffic prevents you turning right. Explanation, the purpose of a box junction is to keep the junction clear by preventing vehicles from stopping in the path of crossing traffic. You mustn't enter a box junction unless your exit is clear. However, you may enter the box and wait if you want to turn right and are only prevented from doing so by oncoming traffic. 11. Where are amber reflective studs found on a motorway? Between each pair of lanes. Between the acceleration lane and the carriageway. Between the central reservation and the carriageway. Between the hard shoulder and the carriageway. Correct answer. Between the central reservation and the carriageway. Explanation. On motorways. Reflective studs of various colors are fixed in the road between the lanes. These help you to identify which lane you're in when it's dark or in poor visibility. Amber-colored studs are found on the right-hand edge of the main carriageway, next to the central reservation. 12. What will the speed limit usually be where you can see street lights but no speed limit signs? 30 miles per hour. 40 miles per hour, 50 miles per hour, 60 miles per hour. Correct answer, 30 miles per hour. Explanation, the presence of street lights generally indicates that there's a 30 miles per hour speed limit, unless signs tell you otherwise. 13. When may you stop on a clearway? During daylight hours. In the rush hour. Never. When it's busy. Correct answer, never. Explanation, clearways are in place so that traffic can flow without the obstruction of parked vehicles. Just one parked vehicle can cause an obstruction for all other traffic. You mustn't stop where a clearway is in force, not even to pick up or set down passengers. 14. Which vehicle might have to take a different course from normal at a roundabout? Estate car. Long vehicle. Sports car. Van. Correct answer, long vehicle. Explanation. A long vehicle may have to straddle lanes either on or approaching a roundabout so that the rear wheels don't mount the curb. If you're following a long vehicle, Stay well back and give it plenty of room. 15. Which sign means no stopping? A. B. C. D. Correct answer, B. Explanation. Stopping where this clearway restriction applies is likely to cause congestion. Allow the traffic to flow by obeying the signs. 16. What does this sign mean? No trams ahead. Oncoming trams. Trams crossing ahead. Trams only. Correct answer. Trams crossing ahead. Explanation. This sign tells you to beware of trams. If you don't usually drive in a town where there are trams, remember to look out for them at junctions and look for tram rails. Signs and signals. 17. The fluid level in your battery is low. What fluid should you use to top it up? Battery acid, distilled water, engine coolant, engine oil. Correct answer. Distilled water. Explanation. Some modern batteries are maintenance free. Check your vehicle handbook and, if necessary, 
make sure that the plates in each battery cell are covered with fluid. Hey team, you've just passed your first practical driving test. What will you have to do if you get six penalty points on your license in the next two years? Reapply for your full license immediately. Retake only your practical test. Retake only your theory test. Retake your theory and practical tests. Correct answer. Retake your theory and practical tests. Explanation. If you accumulate six or more penalty points within two years of gaining your first full license, it will be revoked. The six or more points include any gain due to offenses you committed before passing your test. If this happens, you may only drive as a learner until you pass both the theory and practical tests again. 19. What must you do if you come across roadworks that have a temporary speed limit displayed? Ignore the displayed limit. Obey the limit, but only during rush hour. Obey the speed limit. Use your own judgment, the limit is only advisory. Correct answer, obey the speed limit. Explanation, where there are extra hazards, such as at roadworks, it's often necessary to slow traffic by imposing a lower speed limit. These speed limits aren't advisory, they must be obeyed. 20. What can cause excessive or uneven tire wear? A faulty braking system. A faulty electrical system. A faulty exhaust system. A faulty gearbox. Correct answer. A faulty braking system. Explanation. If you see that parts of the tread on your tires are wearing before others, it may indicate a brake, suspension or wheel alignment fault. Regular servicing will help to detect faults at an early stage and this will avoid the risk of minor faults becoming serious or even dangerous. 21. What should you do as you approach this lorry? Flash your lights at the lorry. Make the lorry wait for you. Move to the right-hand side of the road. Slow down and be prepared to wait. Correct answer. Slow down and be prepared to wait. Explanation. When turning, long vehicles need much more room on the road than other vehicles. At junctions, they may take up the whole of the road space, so be patient and allow them the room they need. 22. What does this signal mean? Both trams and cars can continue. Both trams and cars must stop. Cars must stop. Trams must stop. Correct answer. Trams must stop. Explanation. The white light shows that trams must stop. The green light shows that other vehicles can go if the way is clear. Trams are being introduced into more cities, so you're likely to come across them and you should learn which signs apply to them. 23. You're following a vehicle on a wet road. You stay a safe distance behind it. What should you do if a driver overtakes you and pulls into the gap you've left? Drop back to regain a safe distance. Flash your headlights as a warning. Stay close to the other vehicle until it moves on. Try to overtake safely as soon as you can. Correct answer. Drop back to regain a safe distance. Explanation. Wet weather will affect the time it takes for you to stop and can affect your control. Your speed should allow you to stop safely and in good time. If another vehicle pulls into the gap you've allowed, ease back until you've regained your stopping distance. 24. You're on a motorway that isn't subject to smart motorway regulations. When should you use the hard shoulder? When you're joining the motorway. When you're leaving the motorway. When you're stopping for a rest. When you're stopping in an emergency. Correct answer, when you're stopping in an emergency.
Explanation. Don't use the hard shoulder for stopping unless it's an emergency. If you want to stop for any other reason, go to the next exit or service area. 25. How should you use the lanes on a motorway? Keep to the left-hand lane unless you're overtaking. Overtake using the lane that's clearest. Stay in one lane until you reach your exit. Use the lane that has the least traffic. Correct answer. Keep to the left-hand lane unless you're overtaking. Explanation. You should normally travel in the left-hand lane unless you're overtaking a slower-moving vehicle. When you've finished overtaking, move back into the left-hand lane, but don't cut across in front of the vehicle that you've overtaken. 26. For how long is a statutory off-road notification, SON, valid? Until the vehicle is insured and MOT'd. Until the vehicle is repaired or modified. Until the vehicle is taxed, sold or scrapped. Until the vehicle is used on the road. Correct answer. Until the vehicle is taxed, sold or scrapped. Explanation. A SORN allows you to keep a vehicle off-road and untaxed. SORN will end when the vehicle is taxed, sold or scrapped. 27. How will your journey be affected by traveling outside the busy times of day? Your journey will be more hazardous. Your journey will have fewer delays. Your journey will take longer. Your journey will use more fuel. Correct answer. Your journey will have fewer delays. Explanation. If possible, avoid the early morning, late afternoon and early evening rush hour. Doing this should allow you to have a better journey, with fewer delays. This should help you to arrive at your destination feeling less stressed. 28. You're in a tunnel and you see this sign. What does it mean? Beware of pedestrians crossing ahead. Beware of pedestrians, no footpath ahead. Direction to an emergency pedestrian exit. No access for pedestrians. Correct answer, direction to an emergency pedestrian exit. Explanation, if you have to leave your vehicle and get out of a tunnel by an emergency exit, do so as quickly as you can. Follow the signs directing you to the nearest exit point. If there are several people using the exit, don't panic but try to leave in a calm and orderly manner. 29. When may you stop on a motorway? If you have to read a map. If your mobile phone rings. In an emergency or breakdown. When you're tired and need a rest. Correct answer. In an emergency or breakdown. Explanation. You shouldn't normally stop on a motorway, but there may be occasions when you need to do so. If your vehicle breaks down or there's an emergency, stop on the hard shoulder and use the emergency telephones to call for assistance. 30. What's the national speed limit for a car or motorcycle on a motorway? 50 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour, 80 miles per hour. Correct answer, 70 miles per hour. Explanation, the national speed limit for a car or motorcycle on a motorway is 70 miles per hour. Lower speed limits may be in force, for example, at roadworks. Variable speed limits also operate in some areas when the motorway is very busy. Cars or motorcycles towing trailers are subject to a lower speed limit. 31. You're approaching this roundabout. What should you do when a cyclist is keeping to the left while signaling to turn right? Allow them space to turn. Assume they're turning left. Overtake them. Sound your horn. Correct answer. Allow them space to turn. Explanation. 
Cycling in today's heavy traffic can be hazardous. Some cyclists may not feel safe crossing the path of traffic to take up a position in an outside lane. Be aware of this and understand that, although they're in the left-hand lane, the cyclist might be turning right. 32. What does it mean if you see a pedestrian with a dog that has a yellow or burgundy coat? The pedestrian is a dog trainer. The pedestrian is an older person. The pedestrian is colorblind. The pedestrian is deaf. Correct answer. The pedestrian is deaf. Explanation. Dogs trained to help deaf people have a yellow or burgundy coat. If you see one, you should take extra care, as the pedestrian may not be aware of vehicles approaching. 33. You're going through a long tunnel. What will warn you of congestion or an incident ahead? Areas with hatch markings. Hazard warning lines. Other drivers flashing their lights. Variable message signs. Correct answer. Variable message signs. Explanation. Follow the instructions given by the signs or by tunnel officials. In congested tunnels, a minor incident can soon turn into a major one, with serious or even fatal results. 34. At an incident, someone is suffering from severe burns. How could you help them? Apply lotions to the injury. Burst any blisters. Douse the burns with clean, cool water. Remove anything sticking to the burns. Correct answer. Douse the burns with clean, cool water. Explanation. Your priority is to cool the burns with clean, cool water. Its coolness will help take the heat out of the burns and relieve the pain. Keep the wound doused for at least 20 minutes. If blisters appear, don't attempt to burst them, as this could lead to infection. 35. There's been a collision. A motorcyclist is lying injured and unconscious. Why should you only remove their helmet if it's essential? Removing it could let them get cold. Removing it could make any injuries worse. They might not want you to remove it. You could scratch the helmet as you remove it. Correct answer. Removing it could make any injuries worse. Explanation. When someone is injured, any movement that isn't absolutely necessary should be avoided, since it could make the injuries worse. Unless it's essential to remove a motorcyclist's helmet, it's generally safer to leave it in place. 36. What might you expect to happen in this situation? Traffic speed will increase. Traffic will move into the left-hand lane. Traffic will move into the right-hand lane. Traffic won't need to change position. Correct answer. Traffic will move into the left-hand lane. Explanation. Be courteous and allow the traffic to merge into the left-hand lane. 37. What may help to deter a thief from stealing your car? Always keeping the headlights on. Always keeping the interior light on. Etching the registration number on the windows. Fitting reflective glass windows. Correct answer. Etching the registration number on the windows. Explanation. Having your car registration number etched on all your windows is a cheap and effective way to deter professional car thieves. 38. You're traveling along this road. How should you pass the cyclist? Change down one gear before you pass. Keep close to them as you pass. Leave them plenty of room as you pass. Sound your horn as you pass. Correct answer, leave them plenty of room as you pass. Explanation, allow the cyclist plenty of room in case they wobble or swerve around a pothole or raise drain.
Look well ahead before you start to overtake, because you'll need to cross the hazard line. Look for entrances where vehicles could be waiting to pull out. 39. What should you do if a vehicle pulls out in front of you at a junction? Accelerate past it immediately. Flash your headlights and drive up close behind. Slow down and be ready to stop. Swerve past it and sound your horn. Correct answer. Slow down and be ready to stop. Explanation. Try to anticipate what other drivers might do. Look and plan ahead so that you're ready to respond safely if a hazard develops. Be tolerant of road users who make mistakes. 40. You're driving on a motorway. What does it mean if the car in front shows its hazard warning lights for a short time? The driver wants you to overtake. The other car is going to change lanes. There's a police speed check ahead. Traffic ahead is slowing or stopping suddenly. Correct answer. Traffic ahead is slowing or stopping suddenly. Explanation. If the vehicle in front shows its hazard warning lights, there may be an incident, stop traffic or queuing traffic ahead. By keeping a safe distance from the vehicle in front, you're able to look beyond it and see any hazards well ahead. 41. When should you use hazard warning lights? When warning oncoming traffic that you intend to stop. When you're double parked on a two-way road. When your direction indicators aren't working. When your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. Correct answer. When your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. Explanation. Hazard warning lights are an important safety feature and should be used if you've broken down and are causing an obstruction. Don't use them as an excuse to park illegally. You may also use them on motorways to warn traffic behind you of danger ahead. 42. What can you do to reduce environmental damage caused by your vehicle? Avoid making a lot of short journeys. Avoid using the cruise control. Use the air conditioning whenever you drive. Use the gears to slow the vehicle. Correct answer. Avoid making a lot of short journeys. Explanation. Avoid using your car for short journeys. On a short journey, the engine is unlikely to warm up fully and will therefore be running less efficiently. This will result in the car using more fuel and emitting higher levels of harmful emissions. 43. How should you use anti-lock brakes when you need to stop in an emergency? Apply the parking brake to reduce the stopping distance. Brake normally but grip the steering wheel tightly. Brake promptly and firmly until you've stopped. Keep pumping the foot brake to prevent skidding. Correct answer. Brake promptly and firmly until you've stopped. Explanation. If you have ABS and need to stop in an emergency, keep your foot firmly on the brake pedal until the vehicle has stopped. When the ABS operates, you may hear a grating sound and feel vibration through the brake pedal. This is normal and you should maintain pressure on the brake pedal until the vehicle stops. 44. You're driving at night. What should you do if you're dazzled by a vehicle behind you? Brake sharply to a stop. Set your mirror to dazzle the other driver. Set your mirror to the anti-dazzle position. Switch your rear lights on and off. Correct answer. Set your mirror to the anti-dazzle position. Explanation. The interior mirror of most vehicles can be set to an anti-dazzle position. You'll still be able to see the lights of the traffic behind you, but the dazzle will be greatly reduced. 45. You're driving towards a zebra crossing. What should you do if a person in a wheelchair is waiting to cross? Be prepared to stop. Continue on your way. 
Wave to the person to cross. Wave to the person to wait. Correct answer. Be prepared to stop. Explanation. You should slow down and be prepared to stop, as you would for an able-bodied person. Don't wave them across, as other traffic may not stop. 46. What should you do if your vehicle breaks down in a tunnel? Stand in front of your vehicle to warn oncoming drivers. Stand in the lane behind your vehicle to warn others. Stay in your vehicle and wait for the police. Switch on hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. Correct answer. Switch on hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. Explanation. A broken down vehicle in a tunnel can cause serious congestion and danger to other road users. If your vehicle breaks down, get help without delay. Switch on your hazard warning lights, then go to an emergency telephone to call for help. 47. What can you achieve if you drive smoothly? Increase in fuel consumption by about 15%. Increase in journey times by about 15%. Reduction in fuel consumption by about 15%. Reduction in journey times by about 15%. Correct answer. Reduction in fuel consumption by about 15%. Explanation. By driving smoothly, you'll not only save about 15% of your fuel but will also reduce the amount of wear and tear on your vehicle and the level of pollution it produces. You're also likely to feel more relaxed and have a more pleasant journey. 48. You wish to tow a trailer. Where would you find the maximum nose weight for your vehicle's tow hitch? In the highway code. In the vehicle handbook. In your license documents. In your vehicle registration certificate. Correct answer. In the vehicle handbook. Explanation. You must know how to load your trailer or caravan so that the hitch exerts an appropriate downward force on the tow ball. Information about the maximum permitted nose weight can be found in your vehicle handbook or obtained from your vehicle manufacturer's agent. 49. What can result when you travel for long distances in neutral, known as coasting? Easier steering. Improvement in control. Increased fuel consumption. Reduction in control. Correct answer. Reduction in control. Explanation. Coasting is the term used when the clutch is held down, or the gear lever is in neutral and the vehicle is allowed to freewheel. This reduces the driver's control of the vehicle. When you coast, the engine can't drive the wheels to stabilize you through a corner, or give the assistance of engine braking to help slow the car. 50. You're driving on a road that has a cycle lane. What does it mean if the lane is marked by a broken white line? Cyclists can travel in both directions in that lane. The lane must be used by motorcyclists in heavy traffic. There's a reduced speed limit for motor vehicles using the lane. You shouldn't drive in the lane unless it's unavoidable. Correct answer. You shouldn't drive in the lane unless it's unavoidable. Explanation. Cycle lanes are marked with either a solid or a broken white line. If the line is solid, you should check the times of operation shown on the signs, and not drive or park in the lane during those times. If the line is broken, you shouldn't drive or park in the lane unless it's unavoidable. Hey guys. So today... We have another driving test with uh, 50 questions and a correct answer to each question. So let's get started. Question number one, which road user has caused a hazard? Pay attention to the image, please. A, 
the car turning, which is with the arrow D. You see the red car over there with D. B, the moving car, which is marked with the letter C in the image. And we have the parked car, which is with the arrow A. Or the pedestrian waiting to cross, which is with uh, the arrow B. Okay, guys, let's start the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is C, the parked car, which is with the arrow A. Explanation. The car with the arrow A is parked within the area marked by zigzag lines at the pedestrian crossing. And parking here is actually illegal. And it also blocks the view for pedestrians who want to cross the road, restricting the view of the crossing for approaching traffic. Let's move on to the next question. What should the driver of the gray car be especially aware of? If you have a look, the red arrow is pointing at the gray car. So what should the driver be especially aware of? A. Doors opening on parked cars. B. Empty parking spaces. C. The uneven road surface. Or D. Traffic following behind. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is A, doors opening on parked cars. When you pass parked cars, there is a risk that the driver or a passenger may not check before they open the door into the road. A defensive driver will drive slowly and be looking for people who may be about to get out of their car. Next question. What should you expect if you see this sign ahead? A. The road will bend sharply to the left. B. The road will bend sharply to the right. C. The road will go steeply downhill. Or D. The road will go steeply uphill. And the countdown begins now. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A, the road will bend sharply to the left. This sign shows that the road will bend sharply to the left. You need to slow down in plenty of time and choose the right, the correct gear before you start to turn. Braking hard and late while also sharply changing direction is likely to cause a skid. Question number four. What should you do as you approach this cyclist? A. Flash your headlights at the cyclist. B. Rev your engine so the cyclist knows you are following behind. C. Slow down, allowing the cyclist to turn. D. Try and overtake before the cyclist gets to the junction. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is C. Slow down and allow the cyclist to turn. You need to keep well back and give the cyclist time and plenty of room to turn safely. Don't try to intimidate the cyclist by getting too close or by trying to squeeze past. Question number five. 
What should you do if you want to turn left at a junction where pedestrians have started to cross? A. Give way to them. B. Go around them, leaving plenty of room. C. Sound your horn and proceed. D. Stop and wave at them to cross. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is A. Give way to them. When you are turning into a side road, pedestrians who are crossing, they have priority. You need to wait to allow them to finish crossing safely. Be patient if the pedestrians are slow or they are unsteady. Don't try to rush them by sounding your horn, flashing your lights, revving your engine, or giving any other inappropriate signal. Question number six. Why should you check for motorcyclists just before turning right into a side road? A. They may be emerging from the side road. B. They may be following you closely. C. They may be overtaking on your left. Or D, they may be overtaking on your right. Let's begin the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D, they may be overtaking on your right. Never Try to change direction to the right without first checking your right-hand mirror and the blind spot. A motorcyclist might not have seen your signal and could be hidden by other traffic. This observation should become a matter of routine. Question number seven. Which is the most vulnerable road user? A. Car driver B. Lorry driver C. Motorcyclist or D. Tractor driver 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 And the correct answer is C. The motorcyclist Pedestrians and riders on two wheels can be harder to see than the other road users. You need to make sure that you look for them, especially at junctions. Effective observation coupled with appropriate action can save lives. Question number eight. You are approaching this roundabout. What should you do if there are horses being ridden in front of you. A. Accelerate past as quickly as you can. B. Give them plenty of room. C. Sound your horn to give them a warning. Or D. Treat them like any other vehicle. Let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Give them plenty of room. Horse riders, they often keep to the outside of the roundabout even when they are turning right. Just give them enough room and remember that, that, and remember that they may need to cross lanes of traffic. Question number nine. You are following a lorry on this wet road. What should you do when the spray makes it difficult to see the road ahead? A. Drop back until you can see better. B. Keep close to the lorry, away from the spray. C. 
put your headlights on full beam or D, speed up and overtake quickly. Five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is A, drop back until you can see better. Large vehicles, such as lorries, for example, they can throw up a lot of spray when the road is wet. This makes it difficult for drivers behind to be able to see the road in front of them. You will be able to see more if you drop back further out of the spray. This will also increase your separation distance, giving you more room to stop if you have to. Question 10. When may you wait in a bus junction, like the one in the photo? A. When approaching a pelican crossing. B. When approaching a zebra crossing. C. When oncoming traffic prevents you turning right. Or D. When you are stationary in a queue of traffic. Let's begin the countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is C. When oncoming traffic prevents you turning right. Okay, so the purpose of a box junction is to keep the junction clear by preventing vehicles from stopping in the path of crossing traffic. You mustn't enter a box junction unless your exit is clear. However, you may enter the box and wait if you want to turn right and are only prevented from doing so by oncoming traffic. Question number 11. Where are amber reflective studs found on a motorway? A. Between each pair of lanes. B. Between the acceleration lane and the carriageway. C. Between the central reservation and the carriageway. D. Between the hard shoulder and the carriageway. Five. Four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is C, between the central reservation and the carriageway. On motorways, reflective studs of various colors are fixed in the road between the lanes. These help you to identify which lane you are in when it's dark or in poor visibility. Amber-colored studs are found on the right-hand edge of the main carriageway next to the central reservation. Question number 12. What will the speed limit usually be where you can see street lights but no speed limit signs? A. 30 miles per hour, B, 40 miles per hour, C, 50 miles per hour, or D, 60 miles per hour. Okay, guys, so you have five seconds to guess the correct answer. Four, three, two, one. The correct answer is A, 30 miles per hour. The presence of street lights generally indicates that there is a 30 miles per hour speed limit unless there are signs which tell you otherwise. Question number 13. When may you stop on a clear way? A. During daylight hours. B. In the rush hour. C. Never. Or D. When it's busy. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Never. 
and this is because clear ways are in place so that traffic can flow without the obstruction of parked vehicles. Just one parked vehicle can cause an obstruction for all of the other traffic. You mustn't stop where a clear way is in force, not even to pick up or set down passengers. Next question. Which vehicle might have to take a different course from normal at the roundabout? A. An estate car. B. A long vehicle. C. A sports car. Or D. A van. Okay, guys, the countdown starts now. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is B, a long vehicle. A long vehicle may have to straddle lanes either on or approaching a roundabout so that the rear wheels don't mount the curb. If you are following a long vehicle, stay well back and give it plenty of room. Question number 15. Which sign means no stopping? Sign A, sign B, sign C, or sign D? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is sign B. Stopping where this clear way restriction applies is likely to cause congestion. Allow the traffic to flow by obeying the signs. Question number 16. What does this sign mean? A. No trams ahead. B. Oncoming trams. C. Trams crossing ahead or the trams only. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is C, trams crossing ahead. This sign tells you to beware of trams. If you remember, this is a triangle warning. If you don't usually drive in a town where there are trams, remember to look out for them at junctions and look for tram rails, signs and signals. Next question. The fluid level in your battery is low. What fluid should you use to top it up? A. Battery acid. B. Distilled water. C engine coolant or the engine oil countdown guys five four three two one and the correct answer is b distilled water some modern batteries are maintenance free check your vehicle handbook and if necessary Make sure that the plates in each battery cell are covered with fluid. Question number 18. You have just passed your first practical driving test. Congratulations if you did. What will you have to do if you get six penalty points on your license in the next two years? A. Reapply for your full license immediately. B. Retake only your practical test. C. Retake only your theory test. Or D. Retake your theory and practical tests. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is D. Retake your theory and practical tests. 
if you accumulate six or more penalty points within two years of gaining your first full license, it will be revoked. The six or more points include any gained to, due to offenses you committed before passing your test. If this happens, you may only drive as a learner until you pass both the theory and the practical tests again. Question 19. What must you do if you come across roadworks that have a temporary speed limit displayed? A. Ignore the displayed limit. B. Obey the limit but only during rush hour. C. Obey the speed limit. D. Use your own judgment. The limit is only advisory. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and the correct answer is C, C, obey the speed limit. Where there are extra hazards, such as at roadworks, it's often necessary to slow traffic by imposing a lower speed limit. These speed limits aren't advisory. They must be obeyed. Question number 20. What can cause excessive or uneven tire wear? A. A faulty braking system. B. A faulty electrical system. C. A faulty exhaust system. Or D. A faulty gearbox. Let's start the countdown. Five. Four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is A, a faulty braking system. If you see that parts of the tread on your tires are wearing before others, it may indicate a brake, suspension, or wheel alignment fault. Regular servicing will help to detect faults at an early stage and this will avoid the risk of minor faults becoming serious or even dangerous. Question number 21. What should you do as you approach the lorry in this photo? A. Flash your lights at the lorry. B. Make the lorry wait for you. C. Move to the right-hand side of the road. Or D. Slow down and be prepared to wait. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D. Slow down and be prepared to wait. When turning, long vehicles need much more room on the road than other vehicles. At junctions, they may take up the whole of the road space, so you need to be patient and allow them the room that they need. Next question. What does this signal mean? A. Both trams and cars can continue. B. Both trams and cars must stop. C. Cars must stop or the trams must stop. Countdown five, four, three, two, one. The correct answer is the trams must stop. The white light shows that trams must stop. The green light shows that other vehicles can go if the way is clear. Trams are being introduced into more cities, so you are likely to come across them and you should learn which signs apply to them. Question number 23. You are following a vehicle on a wet road. You stay a safe distance behind it. What should you do if a driver overtakes you and pulls into the gap you've left. A. 
drop back to regain a safe distance, B, flash your headlights as a warning, C, stay close to the other vehicle until it moves on, or D, try to overtake safely as soon as you can. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is a drop back to regain a safe distance. Wet weather will affect the time it takes for you to stop and can also affect your control. Your speed should allow you to stop safely and in plenty of time. If another vehicle pulls into the gap you have allowed, is back until you regain your stopping distance. Next question. You are on a motorway that isn't subject to smart motorway regulations. When should you use the hard shoulder? A, when you are joining the motorway. B, when you are leaving the motorway. C, when you are stopping for a rest. Or D, when you are stopping in an emergency. Countdown, countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D, when you are stopping in an emergency. Do not use the hard shoulder for stopping unless it is a genuine emergency. If you want to stop for any other reason, go to the next exit or service area. So guys, no stopping unless you really, really, really have an emergency. Okay, next question, number 25. How should you use the lanes on a motorway? A. Keep to the left-hand lane unless you are overtaking. B. Overtake using the lane that's clearest. C. Stay in one lane until you reach your exit. Or D. Use the lane that has the least traffic. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is A. Keep to the left-hand lane unless you are overtaking. You should normally travel in the left-hand lane unless you are overtaking a slower moving vehicle. When you finished overtaking, you need to move back into the left-hand lane, but don't cut across in front of the vehicle that you have overtaken. Next question. For how long is a sworn valid? This is the off-road notification. A. Until the vehicle is insured and MOT'd. B. Until the vehicle is repaired or modified. C. Until the vehicle is taxed, sold or scrapped. Or D. Until the vehicle is used on the road. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Until the vehicle is taxed sold or scrapped. A SORN allows you to keep a vehicle off-road and untaxed. SORN will end when the vehicle is taxed, sold or scrapped. Question number 27. How will your journey be affected by traveling outside the busy times of day? A. Your journey will be more hazardous. B. Your journey will have fewer delays. C. Your journey will take longer. D. Your journey will use more fuel. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Your journey will have fewer delays. If Possible, of course, avoid the early morning, late afternoon and early evening rush hour. That's 
obviously because in the early morning everybody goes to work school and so on late in the afternoon school breaks and so on and again you have the early evening the rush hour when office is closed people go home they finish the day at work and so on doing this avoiding the rush hours should allow you to have a better journey with fewer delays this should help you to arrive at your destination feeling less stressed next question you are in a tunnel and you see this sign green yellow white remember what does the sign mean a beware of pedestrians crossing ahead b beware of pedestrians no footpath ahead c direction to an emergency pedestrian exit or d no access for pedestrians let's start the countdown five four three two one and the correct answer is c direction to an emergency pe pedestrian exit if you have to leave your vehicle and get out of a tunnel by an emergency exit do so as quickly as you possibly can you need to follow the signs directing you to the nearest exit point if there are more people using the exit don't panic but try to live in a calm and orderly manner remember the green color and the yellow like we've did, we've done in our previous videos on road signs usually this means some kind of an emergency or access next question when may you stop on a motorway a if you have to read the map b if your mobile phone rings c in an emergency or a breakdown or d when you are tired and you need a rest five four three two one the correct answer is c in an emergency or a breakdown you shouldn't normally stop on a motorway but there may be times when you need to do so if your vehicle breaks down or you have an emergency stop on the hard shoulder and use the emergency phones to call for help question number 30 what's the national speed limit for a car or motorcycle on a motorway a 50 miles per hour b 60 miles per hour c 70 miles per hour or d 80 miles per hour okay guys count down five four three two one the correct answer is c 70 miles per hour the national speed limit for a car or motorbike on a motorway is 70 miles per hour lower speed limits may be in force for example if they are roadworks variable speed limits also operate in some areas when the motorway is very busy cars or motorcycles towing trailers are subject to a lower speed limit next question everyone you are approaching this roundabout what should you do when a cyclist is skipping to the left but they are signaling to turn right a allow them space to turn b assume that they are turning left c overtake them or d sound your horn five four three two one the correct answer is a allow them space to turn and this is because cycling in today's heavy traffic can be hazardous some cyclists may not feel safe crossing the path of traffic to take up a position in an outside lane you need to be aware of this and you also need to understand that even though they are in the left hand lane the cyclist might be turning right next question 
We have some pets here. What does it mean if you see a pedestrian with a dog which has a yellow or a burgundy coat? Oh, they are so cute. A. The pedestrian is a dog trainer. B. The pedestrian is an older person. C. The pedestrian is colorblind. Or D. The pedestrian is deaf. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. The pedestrian is deaf. Dogs trained to help deaf people, they have a yellow or a burgundy coat. If you see one, you should take extra care, as the pedestrian may not be aware of vehicles approaching. Thus, they may not be aware of you as a driver driving your car approaching them. Next question. You are going through a long tunnel. What will warn you of congestion or an incident ahead? Oh, I love long tunnels. Let's see. Let's see, let's see. A. So, what will warn you of congestion or an incident ahead? A. Areas with hatch markings. B. Hazard warning lines. C. Other drivers flashing their lights. Or D. Variable message signs. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is the variable message signs. Please follow the instructions given by the signs or by tunnel officials. In congested tunnels, a minor incident can soon turn into a major one with serious or even fatal results. Next question, and I'm sorry guys, I do apologize, this might be distressing to some of you to see this, but uh, you guys, you need to remember that this is real life and it can actually happen. So yeah, the question is, at an incident, someone is suffering from severe burns, how could you help them? A. Apply lotions to the injury. B. Burst any blisters. C. Douse the burns with clean, cool water. Or D. Remove anything sticking to the burns. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is C. Douse the burns with clean, cool water. Your priority is to cool the burns with clean, cool water. Its coolness will help take the heat out of the burns and relieve the pain. Keep the wound doused for at least 20 minutes. If there are blisters, don't try to burst them as this could lead to infection. And I think that it's always better to be ready and to know what to do in a situation like this. And I think that this is very this is very good that uh, we get this kind of questions in uh, the driving test. Let's move on to the next question, which is going to be, apologies again, another distressing one, but just remember that this is real life and this actually happens. So you need to be ready and you need to be prepared. Our question is, there has been a collision. A motorcyclist is lying injured and unconscious. Why should you only remove their helmet if it's essential? A. Removing the helmet could let them get cold. B. Removing the helmet could make any injuries even worse. C. They might not want you to remove it. Or D. You could scratch the helmet as you remove it. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Removing it could make any injuries worse. When someone is injured, any movement that isn't absolutely necessary should be avoided since it could make the injuries worse. Unless it's essential to remove a motorcyclist's helmet, it's generally safer to leave it in place. Next question. What might you expect to happen in this situation?
A. Traffic speed will increase. B. Traffic will move into the left-hand lane. C. Traffic will move into the right-hand lane. D. Traffic won't need to change position. Let's start the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Traffic will move into the left-hand lane. Be courteous and allow the traffic to merge into the left-hand lane. And uh, if you look at this sign, it is telling you that the right-hand lane is closed and uh, to use the left-hand lane. Next question. What may help to deter a thief from stealing your car? A. Always keeping the headlights on. B. Always keeping the interior light on. C. Etching the registration number on the windows. Or D. Fitting reflective glass windows. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... C. Etching the registration number on the windows. Having your car registration number etched on all your windows is a cheap and effective way to deter professional car thieves. I didn't even have any idea that this was actually a thing, but I think it's a brilliant idea. Okay, let's move on to the next question. You are traveling along this road. How should you pass the cyclist? A. Change down one gear before you pass. B. Keep close to them as you pass. C. Leave them plenty of room as you pass. Or D. Sound your horn as you pass. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. The correct answer is C. Leave them plenty of room as you pass. Allow the cyclists plenty of room in case they wobble or they swerve around the pothole or raise the drain. Look well ahead before you start to overtake because you will need to cross the hazard line. Look for entrances where vehicles could be waiting to pull out. Next question. What should you do if a vehicle pulls out in front of you at a junction? A. Accelerate past it immediately. B. Flash your headlights and drive up close behind. C. Slow down and be ready to stop. Or D. Swerve past it and sound your horn. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Slow down and be ready to stop. Try to anticipate what other drives might do. Look and plan ahead so that you are ready to respond safely if a hazard develops. Be tolerant of road users who make mistakes. Question number 40. You are driving on a motorway. What does it mean if the car in front shows its hazard warning lights for a short time? A. The driver wants you to overtake. B. The other car is going to change lanes. C. There is a police speed check ahead. Or D. Traffic ahead is slowing or stopping suddenly. Countdown, guys. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Traffic ahead is slowing or stopping suddenly. If the vehicle in front shows its hazard warning lights, there may be an incident, stopped traffic or queuing traffic ahead. By keeping a safe distance from the vehicle in front of you, you will be able to look beyond it and see any hazards well ahead. Next question. When should you use hazard warning lights? A. When warning oncoming traffic that you intend to stop. B. When you are double parked on a two-way road. C. When your direction indicators are not working. 
or D, when your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. Count down. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D, when your vehicle has broken down and is causing an obstruction. Hazard warning lights are an important safety feature and should be used if you've broken down and you are causing an obstruction. Don't use them as an excuse to park illegally. You may also use them on motorways to warn traffic behind you of any kind of danger ahead. Next question. What can you do to reduce environmental damage caused by your vehicle? A. Avoid making a lot of short journeys. B. Avoid using the cruise control. C. Use the air conditioning whenever you drive. Or D. Use the gears to slow the vehicle. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A. Avoid making a lot of short journeys. Avoid using your car for short journeys. On a short journey, the engine is unlikely to warm up fully and will therefore be running less efficiently. This will result in the car using more fuel and emitting higher levels of harmful emissions. Next question. How should you use anti-lock brakes when you need to stop in an emergency? A. Apply the parking brake to reduce the stopping distance. B. Brake normally but grip the steering wheel tightly. C. Brake promptly and firmly until you have stopped. Or D. Keep pumping the foot brake to prevent skidding. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... C. Brake promptly and firmly until you have stopped. If you have ABS and you need to stop in an emergency, keep your foot firmly on the brake pedal until the car stops. When the ABS operates, you may hear a grating sound and feel vibration through the brake pedal. This is normal and you should maintain pressure on the brake pedal until the car stops. Question number 44. You are driving at night. What should you do if you are dazzled by a vehicle behind you? A. Brake sharply to a stop. B. Set your mirror to dazzle the other driver. C. Set your mirror to the anti-dazzle position. Or D. Switch your rear lights on and off. Five. Four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is C. Set your mirror to the anti dazzle position. The interior mirror of most vehicles can be set to an anti dazzle position. You will still be able to see the lights of the traffic behind you, but the dazzle will be greatly reduced. It seems that in the last few months, from a lot of media articles I've read, a lot of drivers are actually complaining of uh, this kind of issue, especially when driving uh, when it's dark outside. There is a lot of uh, dazzle and from vehicles behind, and I think that is got something to do with uh, the lights on some modern cars, and they are giving this kind of reflection, which really blinds you, maybe because they. They have LEDs or something in the likes of that. So, and there were a lot of drivers who were actually asking the government to try and do something. But although I'm not sure what can be done about it. But anyway, let's move on to question number 45. You are driving towards a zebra crossing. What should you do if a person in a wheelchair is waiting to cross? A. Be prepared to stop. B. Continue on your way. C. Wave to the person to cross. Or D. Wave to the person to wave. 5, 4, 3, 
two, one, and the correct answer is A, be, be prepared to stop. You should slow down and be prepared to stop as you would for an able-bodied person. Don't wave them across as other traffic may not stop. Question number 46. What should you do if your vehicle breaks down in a tunnel? A. Stand in front of your vehicle to warn oncoming drivers. B. Stand in the lane behind your vehicle to warn others. C. Stay in your vehicle and wait for the police. Or D. Switch on the hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. The countdown starts now. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is... The switch on hazard warning lights, then go and call for help. A broken down vehicle in a tunnel can cause serious congestion and danger to other road users. If your vehicle breaks down, you need to get help without delay. Switch on your hazard warning lights, then go to an emergency telephone to call for help. Please don't stand in front of your car because it's extremely dangerous. Question number 47. What can you achieve if you drive smoothly? A. Increase in fuel consumption by around 15%. B. Increase in journey times by around 15%. C. Reduction in fuel consumption by about 15%. Or D. Reduction in journey times by about 15%. Five, four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is C, reduction in fuel consumption by about 15%. By driving smoothly, you will not only save around 15% of your fuel, but you will also reduce the amount of wear and tear on your vehicle and the level of pollution it produces. You are also likely to feel more relaxed and have a more pleasant journey. Question number 48. You wish to tow a trailer. Where would you find the maximum nose weight for your vehicle's tow hitch? A. In the highway code. B. In the vehicle handbook. C. In your license documents. Or D. In your vehicle registration certificate. Five. Four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is B, in the vehicle handbook. You must know how to load your trailer or caravan so that the hitch exerts an appropriate downward force on the tow ball. Information about the maximum permitted nose weight can be found in your vehicle handbook or obtained from your vehicle manufacturer's agent. Question number 49. What can result when you travel for long distances in neutral or known as coasting? A. Easier steering. B. Improvement in control. C. Increased fuel consumption. Or D. Reduction in control. Five, four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is the reduction in control. Coasting is the term used when the clutch is held down or the gear lever is in neutral and the vehicle is allowed to free wheel. This reduces the driver's control of the vehicle. When you coast, the engine can't drive the wheels to stabilize you through a corner or give the, assi the assistance of engine braking to help slow the car. And we have reached our final question for today, question number 50. You are driving on a road that has a cycle lane. What does it mean if the lane is marked by a broken white line? A. Cyclists can travel in both directions in that lane. B. The lane must be used by motorcyclists in heavy traffic. 
C, there is a reduced speed limit for motor vehicles using the lane, or D, you shouldn't drive in the lane unless it's unavoidable. And our last countdown for today starts now. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D, you shouldn't drive in the lane unless it's unavoidable. Cycle lanes are marked with either a solid or a broken white line. If the line is solid, you should check the times of operation shown on the signs and not drive or park in the lane during those times. If the line is broken, you shouldn't drive or park in the lane unless this is unavoidable. And thank you guys so much for today. Please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe button, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye. One, what's the main hazard shown in this picture? Parked cars around the corner. The cyclist crossing the road. Vehicles doing U-turns. Vehicles turning right. Correct answer is the cyclist crossing the road. Explanation. Look at the picture carefully and try to imagine you're there. The cyclist in this picture appears to be trying to cross the road. You must be able to deal with the unexpected, especially when you're approaching a hazardous junction. Look well ahead to give yourself time to deal with any hazards. 2. What should you do if a driver pulls out of a side road in front of you, causing you to break hard? Flash your lights to show your annoyance. Ignore the error and stay calm. Overtake as soon as possible. Sound your horn to show your annoyance. Correct answer is Ignore the error and stay calm. Explanation Be tolerant if a vehicle emerges and you have to brake quickly. Anyone can make a mistake, so don't react aggressively. Be alert where there are side roads and be especially careful where there are parked vehicles, because these can make it difficult for emerging drivers to see you. 3. You're waiting to turn right out of a minor road. It's clear to the left but a lorry is coming from the right. Why should you wait, even if you have enough time to turn? Anything overtaking the lorry will be hidden from view. The load on the lorry might be unstable. The lorry could suddenly speed up. The lorry might be slowing down. Correct answer is. Anything overtaking the lorry will be hidden from view. Explanation. Large vehicles can hide other vehicles that are overtaking especially motorcycles. You need to be aware of the possibility of hidden vehicles and not assume that it's safe to turn. For which plate may appear with this road sign? A. B. C. D. Correct answer is. A. Explanation. Road humps are used to slow down traffic. They're found in places where there are often pedestrians, such as shopping areas, near schools, residential areas. Watch out for people close to the curb or crossing the road. 5. What's the national speed limit on motorways for cars and motorcycles? 30 miles per hour. 50 miles per hour. 60 miles per hour. 70 miles per hour. Correct answer is... 70 miles per hour. Explanation. Traveling at the national speed limit doesn't allow you to hog the right-hand lane. Always use the left-hand lane whenever possible. When leaving a motorway, get into the left-hand lane well before your exit. Reduce your speed on the slip road and look out for sharp bends or curves and traffic queuing at roundabouts. 6. Which vehicles aren't allowed to use the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway? Motorcycle and sidecar outfits. Motorcycles. Small delivery vans. Vehicles towing a trailer. Correct answer is. Vehicles towing a trailer. Explanation. 
On the motorway, any vehicle towing a trailer is restricted to 60 miles per hour. It isn't allowed in the right-hand lane, as it might hold up faster-moving traffic that wishes to overtake in that lane. 7. You're traveling along a motorway. Where would you find a crawler or climbing lane? Along the hard shoulder. Before a junction. Before a service area. On a steep gradient. Correct answer is. On a steep gradient. Explanation. Large, slow-moving vehicles can hinder the progress of other traffic. On a steep gradient, an extra crawler lane may be provided for slow-moving vehicles to allow faster-moving traffic to flow more easily. 8. What does this sign mean? Bend to the right. No right turn. No traffic from the right. Road on the right closed. Correct answer is. No right turn. Explanation. The no right turn sign may be used to warn road users that there's a no entry prohibition on a road to the right ahead. 9. You're about to overtake. What should you do when you see this sign? Hold back until you can see clearly ahead. Move to the right to get a better view. Overtake the other driver as quickly as possible. Switch your headlights on before overtaking. Correct answer is. Hold back until you can see clearly ahead. Explanation. You won't be able to see any hazards that might be hidden in the dip. As well as oncoming traffic, the dip may conceal. Cyclists. Horse riders. Parked vehicles. Pedestrians. In the road. 10. What do these zigzag white lines mean? No parking at any time. Parking allowed only for a short time. Slow down to 20 miles per hour. Sounding horns isn't allowed. Correct answer is. No parking at any time. Explanation. The approach to, and exit from, a pedestrian crossing is marked with zigzag lines. You mustn't park on them or overtake the leading vehicle when approaching the crossing. Parking here would block the view for pedestrians and approaching traffic. 11. What does this motorway sign mean? No services for 50 miles. Obstruction 50 meters, 164 feet, ahead. Temporary maximum speed 50 miles per hour. Temporary minimum speed 50 miles per hour. Correct answer is. Temporary maximum speed 50 miles per hour. Explanation. Look out for signs above your lane or on the central reservation. These will give you important information or warnings about the road ahead. To allow for the high speed of motorway traffic, these signs may light up some distance from any hazard. Don't ignore the signs just because the road looks clear to you. 12. What does this sign indicate? A cycle route. A diversion route. A pedestrian zone. A picnic area. Correct answer is. A diversion route. Explanation. When a diversion route has been put in place, drivers are advised to follow a symbol, which may be a black triangle, square, circle or diamond shape on a yellow background. 13. What color are the reflective studs between the hard shoulder and the left-hand lane of a motorway? Amber. Green. Red. White. Correct answer is. Red. Explanation. Red studs are placed between the edge of the carriageway and the hard shoulder. Where slip roads leave or join the motorway, the studs are green. 14. You're on a three-lane motorway. Which lane are you in if there are red reflective studs on your left and white ones to your right? In the left-hand lane. In the middle lane. In the right-hand lane. On the hard shoulder. Correct answer is. In the left-hand lane. Explanation. The colors of the reflective studs on the motorway and their locations are. Red between the hard shoulder and the carriageway. White between lanes. Amber between the carriageway and the central reservation. Green along slip road exits and entrances. 
bright green forward slash yellow at roadworks and Cotra flow systems. 15. You're looking for somewhere to safely park your vehicle. Where would you choose to park? At or near a bus stop, in a designated parking space, near the brow of a hill. On the approach to a level crossing. Correct answer is. In a designated parking space. Explanation. It may be tempting to park where you shouldn't while you run a quick errand. Careless parking is a selfish act and could endanger other road users. 16. When may you sound your vehicle's horn? To attract a friend's attention. To give you right of way. To make slower drivers move over. To warn others of your presence. Correct answer is. To warn others of your presence. Explanation. Never sound your vehicle's horn aggressively. You mustn't sound it when driving in a built-up area between 11.30 p.m. and 7 a.m., or when you're stationary, unless another road user poses a danger. Don't scare animals by sounding your horn. 17. Why are place names painted on the road surface? To help you select the correct lane in good time. To prevent you from changing lanes, to restrict the flow of traffic, to warn of oncoming traffic. Correct answer is. To help you select the correct lane in good time. Explanation. The names of towns and cities may be painted on the road at busy junctions and complex road systems. They guide you into the correct lane in good time, allowing traffic to flow more freely. 18. What should you do when you're following a motorcyclist along a road that has a poor surface? Allow extra room in case they swerve to avoid potholes. Allow the same room as normal to avoid wasting road space. Follow closely so they can see you in their mirrors. Overtake immediately to avoid delays. Correct answer is. Allow extra room in case they swerve to avoid potholes. Explanation. To avoid being unbalanced, a motorcyclist might swerve to avoid potholes and bumps in the road. Be prepared for this and allow them extra space. 19. You're in the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway. What do these overhead signs mean? Leave the motorway at the next exit. Move to the left and reduce your speed to 50 miles per hour. There are roadworks 50 meters, 55 yards, ahead. Use the hard shoulder until you've passed the hazard. Correct answer is. Move to the left and reduce your speed to 50 miles per hour. Explanation. You must obey these signs even if there appear to be no problems ahead. There could be queuing traffic or another hazard that you can't see yet. 20. You're traveling along a motorway. When are you allowed to overtake on the left? When in queues and traffic to your right is moving more slowly than you are. When the traffic in the right-hand lane is signaling right. When you can see well ahead that the hard shoulder is clear. When you warn drivers behind by signaling left. Correct answer is. When in queues and traffic to your right is moving more slowly than you are. Explanation. Never overtake on the left. Unless the traffic is moving in queues and the queue on your right is moving more slowly than the one you're in. 21. What does this sign mean? Bus is turning. Keep right. Mini roundabout. Ring road. Correct answer is. Mini roundabout. Explanation. When you see this sign. Look out for any direction signs and judge whether you need to signal your intentions. Do this in good time so that other road users approaching the roundabout know what you're planning to do. 22. What's a statutory off-road notification, SOAR? A notification to tell DVLA that a vehicle isn't being used on the road. A notification to tell DVSA that a vehicle doesn't have a current mo. Information held by insurance companies to check a vehicle is insured. Information kept by the police about the owner of a vehicle. Correct answer is. 
a notification to tell DVLA that a vehicle isn't being used on the road. Explanation If you want to keep a vehicle untaxed and off the public road, you must make a saw. It's an offense not to do so. Your saw is valid until your vehicle is taxed, sold or scrapped. 23. What can you expect if you drive using rapid acceleration and heavy braking? Increased fuel consumption. Increased road safety. Reduced exhaust emissions. Reduced pollution. Correct answer is. Increased fuel consumption. Explanation. Using the controls smoothly can reduce fuel consumption by about 15% as well as reducing wear and tear on your vehicle. Plan ahead and anticipate changes of speed well in advance. This will reduce the need to accelerate rapidly or brake sharply. 24. You stop on the hard shoulder of a motorway and use the emergency telephone. Where's the best place to wait for help to arrive? Next to the phone. On the hard shoulder well away from the carriageway with your vehicle correct answer is well away from the carriageway explanation when you're on the hard shoulder you're at risk of being injured by motorway traffic the safest place to wait is away from the carriageway but near enough to see the emergency services arriving 25. What does this signal from a police officer mean to oncoming traffic? Go ahead. Stop. Turn left. Turn right. Correct answer is. Stop. Explanation. Police officers may need to direct traffic, for example, at a junction where the traffic lights have broken down. Check your copy of the highway code for the signals that they use. 26. You arrive at the scene of a crash where someone is bleeding heavily from a wound in their arm. Nothing is embedded in the wound. What could you do to help? Apply pressure over the wound. Dab the wound. Get them a drink. Walk them around and keep them talking. Correct answer is... Apply pressure over the wound. Explanation. If possible, lay the casualty down, protect yourself from exposure to blood and, when you're sure there's nothing in the wound, apply firm pressure using clean material. 27. A casualty isn't breathing normally and needs CPR. At what rate should you press down and release on the center of their chest? 10 times per minute. 120 times per minute. 240 times per minute, 60 times per minute. Correct answer is 120 times per minute. Explanation. If a casualty isn't breathing normally, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, CPR, may be needed to maintain circulation. Place two hands on the center of the chest and press down hard and fast around 5 to 6 centimeters and about twice a second. 28. When must your vehicle have valid insurance cover? Before you can make a saw. Before you can scrap the vehicle. Before you can sell the vehicle. Before you can tax the vehicle. Correct answer is. Before you can tax the vehicle. Explanation. Your vehicle must have valid insurance cover before you can tax it. If required, it will also need to have a valid MO certificate. You can tax your vehicle online, by phone or at certain post offices. 29. What do you need before you can legally use a motor vehicle on the road? A vehicle handbook, an appropriate driving license, breakdown cover, proof of your identity. Correct answer is an appropriate driving license. Explanation. Using a motor vehicle on the road illegally carries a heavy fine and can lead to penalty points on your driving license. You must hold a valid driving license for the class of vehicle you're using. Be insured to drive the vehicle. If required, 
the vehicle must have a current motest certificate and be taxed for use on the road. 30. How should you signal if you're going straight ahead at a roundabout? Signal left after you leave the roundabout and enter the new road. Signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you're going to take. Signal right on the approach and then left to leave the roundabout. Signal right on the approach to the roundabout and keep the signal on. Correct answer is. Signal left just after you pass the exit before the one you're going to take. Explanation. To go straight ahead at a roundabout, you should normally approach in the left-hand lane, but check the road markings. At some roundabouts, the left lane on approach is marked left turn only, so make sure you use the correct lane to go ahead. You won't normally need to signal as you approach, but signal before you leave the roundabout, as other road users need to know your intentions. 31. A police officer asks to see your documents, you don't have them with you. How many days do you have to produce them at a police station? 14 days, 21 days, 5 days, 7 days. Correct answer is 7 days. Explanation. You don't have to carry your vehicle's documents wherever you go. If a police officer asks to see them and you don't have them with you, you may be asked to produce them at a police station within seven days. 32. An adult casualty isn't breathing. To maintain circulation, CPR should be given. What's the correct depth to press down on their chest? 1 to 2 centimeters. 10 to 15 centimeters. 15 to 20 centimeters. 5 to 6 centimeters. Correct answer is 5 to 6 centimeters. Explanation An adult casualty isn't breathing normally. To maintain circulation, place two hands on the center of the chest. Then press down hard and fast around 5 to 6 centimeters and about twice a second. 33. What could cause you to crash if the level is allowed to get too low? At a freeze level, battery water level, brake fluid level, radiator coolant level. Correct answer is brake fluid level. Explanation. You should carry out frequent checks on all fluid levels but particularly brake fluid. As the brake pads or shoes wear down, the brake fluid level will drop. If it drops below the minimum mark on the fluid reservoir, air could enter the hydraulic system and lead to a loss of braking efficiency or even complete brake failure. 34. You're following other vehicles in fog. You have your headlights on dipped beam. What else can you do to reduce the chances of being in a collision? Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. Keep close to the vehicle in front. Keep up with the faster vehicles. Use main beam instead of dipped headlights. Correct answer is. Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. Explanation. When it's foggy, use your headlights on dipped beam. This will help you see and be seen by other road users. If visibility is seriously reduced, consider using front and rear fog lights if you have them. Keep to a sensible speed and don't follow the vehicle in front too closely. If the road is wet and slippery, you will need to allow twice the normal stopping distance. 35. A collision has just happened. An injured person is lying in a busy road. What's the first thing you should do? Make sure the injured person is kept warm. Place them in the recovery position. Treat the person for shock. Warn other traffic. Correct answer is. Warn other traffic. Explanation. The most immediate danger is further collisions and fire. You could warn other traffic by switching on hazard warning lights, displaying an advance warning triangle or sign, 
but not on a motorway, or by any other means that doesn't put you or others at risk. 36. What's the main benefit of driving a four-wheel drive vehicle? Improved grip on the road. Improved passenger comfort. Lower fuel consumption. Shorter stopping distances. Correct answer is. Improved grip on the road. Explanation. By driving all four wheels, the vehicle has maximum grip on the road. This grip is especially helpful when traveling on slippery or uneven surfaces. However, having four-wheel drive doesn't replace the skills you need to drive safely. 37. You're driving towards this level crossing. What would be the first warning of an approaching train? A steady amber light. Both half barriers down. One half barrier down. Twin flashing red lights. Correct answer is. A steady amber light. Explanation. The steady amber light will be followed by twin flashing red lights that mean you must stop. An alarm will also sound to alert you to the fact that a train is approaching. 38. You're driving on a road with several lanes. What do these signs above the lanes mean? The two left lanes are open. The two right lanes are open. Traffic in the left lanes should stop. Traffic in the right lanes should stop. Correct answer is. The two left lanes are open. Explanation. On some busy roads, lane control signals are used to vary the number of lanes available to give priority to the main traffic flow. A green arrow indicates that the lane is available to traffic facing the signal. A white diagonal arrow means that the lane is closed ahead and traffic should move to the next lane on the left. A red cross means that the lane is closed to traffic facing the signal. 39. What advice should you give to a driver who has had a few alcoholic drinks at a party? Drive home carefully and slowly. Go home by public transport. Have a strong cup of coffee and then drive home. Wait a short while and then drive home. Correct answer is, go home by public transport. Explanation. Drinking black coffee or waiting a few hours won't make any difference. Alcohol takes time to leave the body. A driver who has been drinking should go home by public transport or taxi. They might even be unfit to drive the following morning. 40. You're about to reverse into a side road. What should you do if a pedestrian is waiting to cross behind your car? Give way to the pedestrian. Reverse before the pedestrian starts to cross. Sound your horn to warn the pedestrian. Wave to the pedestrian to stop. Correct answer is. Give way to the pedestrian. Explanation. If you need to reverse into a side road, try to find a place that's free from traffic and pedestrians. Look all around before and during the maneuver. Stop and give way to any pedestrians who want to cross behind you. Avoid waving them across, sounding the horn, flashing your lights or giving any signals that could mislead them and create a dangerous situation. 41. You're waiting at a level crossing. What should you do if the red warning lights continue to flash after a train has passed by? Continue to wait. Drive across carefully. Get out and investigate. Telephone the signal operator. Correct answer is, continue to wait. Explanation. At a level crossing, flashing red lights mean you must stop. If the train passes but the lights keep flashing, wait. Another train may be coming. 42. How should you give an arm signal to turn left? A. B. C. D. Correct answer is C. Explanation. There may be occasions when other road users are unable to see your indicator, such as in bright sunlight or at a busy, complicated junction. In these cases, an arm signal will help others to understand your intentions. 43. What's most likely to waste fuel? Driving on motorways. Reducing your speed. 
under inflated tires. Using different brands of fuel. Correct answer is under inflated tires. Explanation. Wasting fuel costs you money and also causes unnecessary pollution. Ensuring your tires are correctly inflated, avoiding carrying unnecessary weight and removing a roof rack that's not in use will all help to reduce your fuel consumption. 44. How can you reduce the damage your vehicle causes to the environment? Anticipate well ahead. Brake heavily. Use busy routes. Use narrow side streets. Correct answer is. Anticipate well ahead. Explanation. By looking well ahead and recognizing hazards in good time, you can avoid late and heavy braking. Watch the traffic flow and look well ahead for potential hazards so you can control your speed in good time. Avoid overrevving the engine and accelerating harshly, as this increases wear to the engine and uses more fuel. 45. Why should you allow extra room while overtaking a motorcyclist on a windy day? The rider may be blown in front of you. The rider may be traveling faster than normal. The rider may stop suddenly. The rider may turn off suddenly to get out of the wind. Correct answer is. The rider may be blown in front of you. Explanation. If you're driving in high winds, be aware that the conditions might make a motorcyclist, or cyclist, swerve or wobble. Take this into consideration if you're following or wish to overtake a two-wheeled vehicle. 46. What can seriously reduce your ability to concentrate? Busy roads. Drugs. Tinted windows. Weather conditions. Correct answer is drugs. Explanation. Both recreational drugs and prescribed medicine can affect your concentration. It's also an offense to drive with certain drugs in your body and a positive test could lead to a conviction. 47. Why is it bad technique to coast when you're driving downhill? The engine will overheat. The fuel consumption will increase. The tires will wear more quickly. The vehicle will gain speed more quickly. Correct answer is. The vehicle will gain speed more quickly. Explanation. Coasting is when you allow the vehicle to freewheel in neutral or with the clutch pedal depressed. When traveling downhill, this will cause the vehicle to gain speed more quickly as you lose the benefits of engine braking. It may even lead to a loss of control. You shouldn't coast, especially when approaching hazards such as junctions or bends and when traveling downhill. 48. When may a passenger travel in a car without wearing a seat belt? When they are exempt for medical reasons. When they are sitting in the rear seat. When they are under 1.5 meters, 5 feet, in height. When they are under 14 years old. Correct answer is. When they are exempt for medical reasons. Explanation. If you have adult passengers, it's their responsibility to wear a seat belt, but you should still remind them to use one as they get in the car. It's your responsibility to make sure that all children in your car are secured with an appropriate restraint. Exemptions are allowed for those with a medical exemption certificate. 49. What should you do if you start to feel drowsy while you're driving on a motorway? Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. Slow down and let other drivers overtake. Speed up to arrive at your destination sooner. Stop on the hard shoulder for a sleep. Correct answer is. Open a window and stop as soon as it's safe and legal. Explanation. Never stop on the hard shoulder to rest. If there's no service area for several miles, leave the motorway at the next exit and find somewhere safe and legal to pull over. 50. What does it mean if the electronic stability control, escape, indicator lamp lights up while you're driving? 
The escape system has a fault. The escape system has activated. The escape system is running a routine test. The escape system is switched off. Correct answer is. The escape system has activated. Explanation. Escape is a computer-controlled technology that detects reduced traction and automatically makes corrective adjustments to prevent loss of control. The escape lamp comes on to alert the driver that the system has activated and the car is approaching its handling limits. It's a powerful driver aid but it cannot save a car once its traction limits have been exceeded. 1. Why should these road markings be kept clear? To allow children to be dropped off at school. To allow children to be picked up after school. To allow children to see and be seen when they're crossing the road. To allow teachers to park. Correct answer, to allow children to see and be seen when they're crossing the road. Explanation, the markings are there to show that the area should be kept clear. This is to allow an unrestricted view for approaching drivers and riders, children wanting to cross the road. 2. What should you do when you see this sign at a crossroads? Carry on with great care. Find another route. Maintain the same speed. Telephone the police. Correct answer, carry on with great care. Explanation, when traffic lights are out of order, treat the junction as an unmarked crossroads. Be very careful and be prepared to stop, no one has priority. 3. You're driving on a country road that has no pavement. What should you anticipate finding on your side of the road? Bicycles. Horse riders. Motorcycles. Pedestrians. Correct answer, pedestrians. Explanation, on a quiet country road, always be aware that there may be a hazard just around the next bend, such as a slow-moving vehicle or pedestrians. Pedestrians are advised to walk on the right-hand side of the road if there's no pavement so they may be walking towards you on your side of the road. 4. What's the nearest you may park to a junction? 10 meters, 32 feet. 12 meters, 39 feet. 15 meters, 49 feet. 20 meters, 66 feet. Correct answer, 10 meters, 32 feet. Explanation, don't park within 10 meters, 32 feet, of a junction, unless in an authorized parking place. This is to allow drivers emerging from, or turning into, the junction a clear view of the road they're joining. It also allows them to see hazards such as pedestrians or cyclists at the junction. 5. What should you do if you have to stop while you're going through a congested tunnel? Ignore any message signs, as they're never up to date. Keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. Make a U-turn and find another route. Pull up very close to the vehicle in front to save space. Correct answer, keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. Explanation, it's important to keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front at all times. This still applies in congested tunnels, even if you're moving very slowly or have stopped. If the vehicle in front breaks down, you may need room to maneuver past it. 6. What does it mean when a moving vehicle is showing a flashing amber beacon? The vehicle belongs to a school crossing patrol. The vehicle has broken down. The vehicle is a doctor's car. The vehicle is slow moving. Correct answer, the vehicle is slow moving. Explanation, different colored beacons warn of different types of vehicle needing special attention. Blue beacons are used on emergency vehicles that need priority. Green beacons are found on doctor's cars. Amber beacons generally denote slower moving vehicles, which are often large. These vehicles are usually involved in road maintenance or local amenities and make frequent stops. 7. How can you reduce the environmental harm caused by your motor vehicle? Don't service it. Drive faster than normal. Keep engine revs low. Only use it for short journeys. Correct answer, keep engine revs low. Explanation, 
engines that burn fossil fuels produce exhaust emissions that are harmful to health. The harder you make the engine work, the more emissions it will produce. Engines also use more fuel and produce higher levels of emissions when they're cold. Anything you can do to reduce your use of fossil fuels will help the environment. 8. Some two-way roads are divided into three lanes. Why are they particularly dangerous? Traffic can overtake on the left. Traffic can travel faster in poor weather conditions. Traffic in both directions can use the middle lane to overtake. Traffic uses the middle lane for emergencies only. Correct answer. Traffic in both directions can use the middle lane to overtake. Explanation. If you intend to overtake, you must consider that approaching traffic could be planning the same maneuver. When you've considered the situation and decided it's safe, indicate your intentions early. This will show the approaching traffic that you intend to pull out. 9. On a smart motorway, what does this sign mean? Use all the lanes, including the hard shoulder. Use any lane except the hard shoulder. Use the hard shoulder only. Use the three right-hand lanes only. Correct answer, use all the lanes, including the hard shoulder. Explanation, you must obey mandatory speed limit signs above motorway lanes, including the hard shoulder. In this case, you can use the hard shoulder as a running lane but you should look for any vehicles that may have broken down and may be blocking the hard shoulder. 10. Your insurer will issue you with an insurance certificate. When must you produce this document for inspection? When a police officer asks you for it. When buying or selling a vehicle. When making a SORN. When your vehicle is having an MOT test. Correct answer, when a police officer asks you for it. Explanation, you must produce a valid insurance certificate when requested by a police officer. If you can't do this immediately, you may be asked to take it to a police station. Other documents you may be asked to produce are your driving license and the vehicle's MOT certificate. Hey guys, so today I have another test for you with 50 questions, the same one correct answer and I'll also be giving you the explanation to the correct answer. So, let's get started with question number one. What should you do if your mobile phone rings while you are driving or riding? And let's have a look at our options. A. Answer it immediately. B. Leave it until you have stopped in a safe place. C. Pull up at, a, at the nearest curve. Or D. Stop immediately. And our first countdown for today begins now. 5. Four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is B. Leave it until you have stopped in a safe place. It's illegal to use a handheld mobile or similar device when you are driving or you are riding except in a genuine emergency. So, the safest option is to switch off your mobile phone before you set off and use a message service. If you forgot to switch your phone off and the phone rings, you should just leave it to ring. When you stopped in a safe place, you can see who called and then you can return the call if it's necessary. And question number two is the following. What does this sign mean? A. End of controlled parking zone B. End of traffic calming zone C. Free parking zone ends or D. No through road 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 And the correct answer is a. End of controlled zone. This sign shows that you are leaving a controlled parking zone and those restrictions no longer apply. 
Question number three. Where should you avoid overtaking? And please pay attention to the picture you see on your screen right now. And let's have a look at our options. A. Approaching a dip in the road. B. In a one-way street. C. Just after a bend. Or D. On a 30 miles per hour road. And let's begin the countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A. Approaching a dip in the road. Oncoming vehicles or other hazards can be hidden from view by dips in the road. So, if you can't see into the dip, wait until you have a clear view and can see that it's safe before you start to overtake. Question number four. What is covered by third-party insurance? A. Damage to other vehicles B. Damage to your vehicle C. Fire damage to your vehicle or D. Flood damage to your vehicle 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and the correct answer is a. Damage to other vehicles. Third-party insurance doesn't cover damage to your own vehicle or injury to yourself. If you have a crash and your vehicle is damaged, you might have to carry out the repairs at your own expense. Question number five. What does this sign mean? A. Approaching traffic passes you on both sides. B. Give way to oncoming vehicles. C. Pass either side to get to the same destination. Or D. Turn off at the next available junction. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Pass either side to get to the same destination. These signs are often seen in one-way streets that have more than one lane. When you do see this sign, use the route that's the most convenient and doesn't require a late change of direction. And how about this sign? What does this motorway sign mean? A. Change to the lane on your left. B. Change to the opposite carriageway. C. Leave the motorway at the next exit. Or D. Pull up on the hard shoulder. And let's start our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And our correct answer is... A. Change to the lane on your left. On the motorway, signs sometimes they show temporary warnings because of traffic or weather conditions or things similar like that. So they may be used to indicate lane closures, temporary speed limits or weather warnings. And our question number seven is the following. When may you use hazard warning lights? A. When driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind of a hazard ahead. B. When warning oncoming traffic that you intend to stop. C. When you are double parked on a two-way road. Or D. When your direction indicators are not working. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... And the correct answer is A. When driving on a motorway to warn traffic behind of a hazard ahead.
Hazard warning lights are an important safety feature. Use them when you drive on a motorway to warn traffic behind you of any kind of danger ahead. You should also use them if your vehicle is broken down and is causing an obstruction to traffic. Next question. What type of vehicle uses an amber flashing beacon on a dual carriageway? A. A doctor on call. B. A fire engine. C. A tractor. Or D. An ambulance. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the right answer is C. A tractor. An amber flashing beacon on a vehicle indicates that it's moving slowly or stopped and a possible hazard. So please look well ahead on a dual carriageway and you should be able to see and respond to these vehicles in good time. Next question. Why should you look carefully for motorcyclists and cyclists at junctions? A. They may slow down to let you turn. B. They may want to turn into the side road. C. They might not see you turn. Or D. They are harder to see. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. They are harder to see. Cyclists and motorcyclists are smaller than other vehicles and so they are more difficult to see. They can easily be hidden from your view by cars which are parked near the junction. Question number 10. You are at a junction which is controlled by traffic lights. When should you wait at a green light? A. When pedestrians are waiting to cross. B. When you intend to turn right. C. When you think that the lights may be about to change. Or D. When your exit from the junction is blocked. 5. Four, three, two, one, and the correct answer is D. When your exit from the junction is blocked. As you approach the traffic lights, look into the road that you want to take. Only go forward if your exit road is clear. If the road is blocked, you need to hold back even if you have to wait for the next green signal. And let's see what our next question is. What should you do when you park your car at night on a road which has a 40 mile per hour speed limit? A. Leave dipped headlights switched on. B. Leave parking lights switched on. C. Park facing the traffic. Or D. Park near a street light. And let's start with our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Leave parking lights switched on. You must use parking lights when parking at night on a road or in a lay-by on a road with a speed limit which is greater than 30 miles per hour. You must also park in the direction of the traffic flow and not close to a junction. Question number 12. What does this curved arrow road marking mean? Please pay attention at the yellow arrow which is pointed towards the curved arrow road marking. 
And now let's see what our options are. A. Heavy vehicles should take the next, the next road on the left to avoid the weight limit. B. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left. C. The road ahead bends to the left. Or D. The road ahead has a camber to the left. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And let's see what is the correct answer. B. Overtaking traffic should move back to the left. So if you have a look at this picture, the road marking shows that overtaking drivers or riders, they need to turn to the left. These markings show the direction that drivers must pass, hatch markings or solid double white lines. They are also used to show the route that high vehicles should take under a low arched bridge. Next question, which is this? What shape are traffic signs which are giving orders? Shape A, shape B, shape C, or shape D? And let's start with our countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And let's see which one is the correct answer. The correct answer is shape D. Road signs, which are shaped uh, as a circle, they give orders. Those with a red circle are mostly prohibitive. The stop signs is octagonal to give it greater prominence. Signs giving orders must always be obeyed. Question number 14. What should you do before you start a journey in foggy weather? A. Allow more time for the journey. B. Have a ca caffeinated, caffeinated drink. C. Reduce your tire pressures. Or D, wear a high visibility jacket. And let's start with our countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is A, allow more time for the journey. Don't venture out if your journey isn't absolutely necessary. If you have to travel and someone is expecting you at the end, at the other end or at the end of your journey, please let them know that you will be taking longer than usual to get there. This will stop them worrying if you don't turn up on time and it will also take the pressure off of you so you don't feel that you need to rush. Question number 15. You are driving on the motorway. How can you lower the risk of a collision when the vehicle behind you is following a bit too closely? A. Brake sharply. B. Increase your distance from the vehicle in front. C. Move on to the hard shoulder and stop. Or D. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is B. Increase your distance from the vehicle in front. On busy roads, traffic may still travel at high speeds. So don't follow the vehicle in front of you too closely. If a driver behind you seems to be kind of pushing you, Gradually increase your distance from the vehicle in front of you by slowing down gently. This will give you more space in front if you have to brake suddenly and it will also reduce the risk of a collision involving several vehicles. And our next question is this. 
You are on a smart motorway. What does it mean when a red cross is displayed above the hard shoulder? A. Pull up in this lane to answer your mobile phone. B. This lane can be used if you need a rest. C. Use this lane as a running lane. Or D. You should not travel in this lane. 5. 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. You should not travel in this lane. Some motorways have been redesigned as smart motorways. At certain times, the hard shoulder will be open as a running lane. However, a red cross above the hard shoulder will show you that it isn't open as a running lane and should only be used for emergencies and breakdowns. Question number 17. You are following a large vehicle. Why should you stay a safe distance behind this vehicle? A. You will be able to corner more quickly. B. You will give the driver a chance to see you in their mirrors. C. You will help the large vehicle stop more easily. Or D. You will keep out of the wind better. Let's start our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... And the correct answer is B. You will give the driver of the large vehicle a chance to see you in their mirrors. If you are following a large vehicle but are so close to it that you can't really see the exterior mirrors, they are exterior mirrors, then the driver won't be able to see you. Keeping well back will also allow you to see the road ahead by looking past the large vehicle. Next question. What should you do when you see this sign as you travel along a motorway? A. Change lane. B. Leave the motorway at the next exit. C. Move on to the hard shoulder. Or D. Turn left immediately. And let's start with our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is, let's have a look. B. Leave the motorway at the next exit. You will see this sign if the motorway is closed ahead. Pull into the left-hand lane as soon as it's safe to do it. Don't wait until the last moment before you move across because the lane may be busy and you will have to rely on another driver making room for you. Next question. You lose control of your car and you damage a garden wall. What must you do if the property owner is not available? A. Find someone in the area to tell them about what happened immediately. B. Go back to tell the house owner the next day. C. Report the incident to the police within 24 hours. Or D. Report the incident to your insurance company when you get home. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Report the incident to the police within 24 hours of it happening. If the property owner is not available at the time of the incident, you have to inform the police about what happened. This should be done as soon as possible and in any case within 24 hours. Question number 20. You are having difficulty finding a parking space in a busy town. Can you park on the zigzag lines of a zebra crossing? A. No. 
not under any circumstances, B, no, not unless you stay with your car, C, yes, if you don't, if you don't block people from crossing, or D, yes, in order to drop off a passenger. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is no, not under any circumstances. It is actually an offense to park on the zigzag lines of a zebra crossing. You will be causing an obstruction by obscuring the view of both pedestrians who are using the crossing and also other drivers. Next question is this. Your vehicle stalled in the middle of a level crossing, which hopefully is not going to happen. So, if your vehicle stopped in the middle of a level crossing, what should you do if the warning bells start to ring while you are trying to restart your car's engine? A. Carry on trying to restart the engine. B. Get out of the car and clear of the crossing. C. Push the vehicle clear of the crossing. Or D. Round down the track to warn the signal operator. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Just get out of the car and clear off the crossing. If the warning bells ring, you need to leave your car immediately and get any passengers well clear of the crossing as well, as soon as possible. Question number 22. What does this sign mean? A. Ahead only. B. Crossroads. C. Level crossing with a gate. Or D. Level crossing without a gate. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... B. Crossroads. The priority through the junction is shown by the broader line. You need to be aware of the hazard posed by traffic crossing or pulling out onto a major road. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Lay by 30 miles ahead. B. Maximum speed 30 miles per hour. C. Minimum speed 30 miles per hour. Or D. Service area 30 miles ahead. And let's start our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. Minimum speed of 30 miles per hour. This sign is shown where slow moving vehicles could impede the flow of traffic, for example, in tunnels. However, if you do need to slow down or even stop to avoid an incident or a potential collision, you should do so. Question number. 24. You are driving in the right-hand lane of a dual carriageway. What should you do if you see this sign showing that the right-hand lane is closed 800 yards ahead? A. Keep in the lane until you reach the queue. B. Move to the left immediately. C. Move to the left in good time. Or D, wait and see which lane is moving faster. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C, move to the left in good time. 
Keep a lookout for traffic signs. If you are directed to change lanes, you need to do so in good time. Don't push your way into traffic in another lane or try to take advantage by delaying changing lanes. Question number 25. Who has priority at unmarked crossroads? A. No one has priority. B. The faster vehicle. C. The larger vehicle. Or D. The smaller vehicle. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... A. No one has priority at unmarked crossroads. Please practice good observation in all directions before you emerge or you make a turn. Only move forward when you are sure that it's safe to do so. Next question is this. You are turning right into a dual carriageway. What should you do if the central reservation is too narrow to contain your vehicle? A. Emerge slightly to show your intentions. B. Proceed to the central reservation and wait. C. Stop in the first lane so that other vehicles give way. Or D. Wait until the road is clear in both directions. And let's start our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Wait until the road is clear in both directions. When the central reservation is narrow, it may not be able to contain your vehicle. If this is the case, you should treat a dual carriageway as one road. Wait until the road is clear in both directions before emerging to turn right. If you try to treat it as two separate roads and you wait in the middle, your vehicle will stick out and cause an obstruction which may then lead to a collision. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. No pedestrians allowed. B. Pedestrian zone, no vehicles. C. School crossing patrol or D, zebra crossing ahead. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D, zebra crossing ahead. Look well ahead and be ready to stop for any pedestrians crossing or who are about to cross the road. Also, check the pavements for anyone who looks like they might step or they might run into the road. Question number 28. Where would you see this sign? A. At a pedestrian-only area. B. At a playground entrance. C. Near a school crossing. Or D. On a school bus. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is D on a school bus. School buses can stop to pick up or drop off school children at places that are not designated bus stops. So please watch out for children crossing the road to catch the bus or from the far side of the bus if the children have just been dropped off. Next question. Which sign informs you that you are coming to a no-through road? Sign A, sign B, sign C or sign D? Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is sign C. 
design is found at the entrance to a road which can only be used for access. Question number 30. Which sign means that pedestrians may be walking along the road? Sign A, sign B, sign C, or sign D? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is sign A. When you pass pedestrians in the road, please leave plenty of room. You might have to use the right-hand side of the road, so you need to look well ahead, as well as in your mirrors before you pull out. Take great care if a bend in the road obscures your view ahead. Next question. You are approaching a red light at a puffing crossing. Pedestrians are on the crossing. When will the red light change? A. When a driver from the opposite direction reaches the crossing. B. When the pedestrians have cleared the crossing. C. When the pedestrians push the button on the far side of the crossing. Or D. When you start to edge forward onto the crossing. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and the correct answer is B, when the pedestrians have cleared the crossing. A sensor will automatically detect that the pedestrians have reached a safe position. Don't drive on until the green light shows and it's safe for you to do so. Next question. What should you do if a tire bursts while you are driving? A. Brake as quickly as possible. B. Continue on at a normal speed. C. Pull on the parking brake. Or D, pull up slowly at the side of the road. And let's start our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D, pull up slowly at the side of the road. A tire bursting can lead to loss of control, especially if you are traveling at a high speed. Using the correct procedure should help you to stop the car safely. Next question. You are towing a caravan. Which is the safest type of rear view mirror to use? A. Extended arm side mirrors. B. Interior wide angle mirror. C. Ordinary door mirrors or D, ordinary interior mirror. Five, four, three, two, one. And the correct answer is A, extended arm side mirrors. Towing a large trailer or a caravan can greatly reduce your view of the road behind. You may need to fit extended arm side mirrors so that you can see clearly behind and down both sides of the caravan or the trailer. Next question, let's have a look at it. When may you overtake another vehicle on their left? A. When a slower vehicle is traveling in the right-hand lane of a dual carriageway. B. When approaching a motorway slip road where you will be turning off. C. When the vehicle in front is signaling to turn left. Or D. When you are in a one-way street. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is... D. When you are in a one-way street. 
You may pass slower vehicles on their left while traveling along a one-way street. Be aware of drivers who may need to change lanes and may not expect faster traffic passing on their left. Question number 35. What does this sign mean? A. Bridge over the road. B. Road ahead and C. Uneven road surface or D. Water across the road. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and the correct answer is D. Water across the road. This sign is found where a shallow stream crosses the road. Heavy rainfall could increase the flow of the water. If the water looks too deep or the stream has spread over a large distance, please stop and find another route. Next question. In winter, road signs can become covered by snow. So, having a look at this image, what does this sign mean? A. Crossroads B. Give way C. Stop or D. Turn right 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and the correct answer is C. Stop The stop sign is the only road sign which is octagonal in shape. This is so that it can be recognized and obeyed even if it's obscured, for example, by snow or covered in snow. Next question. You are carrying a child who is under three years old in your car. Which restraint is suitable for a child of this age? A. A child seat. B. An adult holding a child. C. An adult lap belt. Or D. An adult seat belt. And let's begin with our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is A. A child seat. It is your responsibility to ensure that all children in your car are secure. Suitable restraints include a child seat, a baby seat, a booster seat or a booster cushion, depending on their age. It's essential that any restraint used is suitable for the child's size and the weight and fitted according to the manufacturer's instructions. Next question. Which type of vehicle should you be ready to give way to as soon as you approach the bridge in this image? A. Bicycles B. Buses C. Cars or D. Motorcycles 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and the correct answer is B. Buses. A bus or a high-sided lorry will have to take a position in the center of the road so they can clear the bridge. There is normally a sign to show this. Look well ahead, past the bridge and be ready to stop and give way to large oncoming vehicles. And let's have a look at our following question. What's the reason for traffic calming measures? A. To make overtaking easier. B. To make parking easier. C. To slow traffic down. Or D. To stop road rage. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... And the correct answer is C, to slow traffic down. 
Traffic calming measures make the roads safer for vulnerable road users such as cyclists, pedestrians and children. This can be designed as chicanes, road humps or other obstacles that, can, that encourage drivers and riders to slow down. Question number 40. How does drinking alcohol affect your driving behavior? A. It improves judgment skills. B. It increases concentration. C. It increases confidence. Or D. It leads to faster reactions. And let's start with our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. It increases confidence. Alcohol can increase confidence to a point where your driving behavior might become out of character. Sensible behavior might change to risk-taking behavior. So never let yourself or your friends get into this situation. Next question. This junction, controlled by traffic lights, has a marked area between two stop lines. What is this area for? A. To allow cyclists and pedestrians to cross the road together. B. To allow cyclists to position in front of other traffic. C. To allow people with disabilities to cross the road or D, to allow taxis to position in front of other traffic. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B, to allow cyclists to position in front of the other traffic. These are known as advanced stop lines. When the lights are red or they are about to become red, you should stop at the first white line. However, if you have crossed the line, as the lights change, you must stop at the second line, even if it means that you are in the area which is reserved for cyclists. Next question. What must you check before you drive someone else's car? A. That the insurance documents are in the vehicle. B. That the vehicle is insured for your use. C. That the vehicle owner has third-party insurance cover. Or D. That your own vehicle has insurance cover. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. That the vehicle is insured for your use. Driving a vehicle without insurance cover is illegal. So be sure that whoever, whoever's car you drive, you are insured, whether on their policies or on your own. If you need to take out insurance, it's worth comparing several quotes before you decide which insurance provider best meets your needs. Next question. Why should you keep well to the left as you approach a right-hand bend? A. To be positioned safely if you skid. B. To improve your view of the road. C. To let faster traffic from behind overtake. Or D. To overcome the effect of the road's slope. 5, 4, 3... Two, one, and the correct answer is B, to improve your view of the road. Keeping to the left as you approach right-hand bends will give you an earlier view around the bend and enable you to see any kind of hazard sooner. It also reduces the risk of collision with any oncoming vehicle which may have drifted over the center line while taking the bend. Next question. 
What should you do if you think that the driver of the vehicle in front of you forgot to cancel their right indicator? A. Flash your lights to alert the driver. B. Overtake on the left if there is room to do that. C. Sound your horn before you overtake. Or D. Stay behind and do not overtake. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D. Stay behind and do not overtake. Be cautious and don't try to overtake. The driver may be unsure of the location of a junction and they may turn suddenly. Question number 45. You are on a smart motorway. What does it mean if a red cross is showing above the hard shoulder and mandatory speed limits above all other lanes? A. The hard shoulder can be used as a normal running lane. B. The hard shoulder can be used as a rest area if you feel that you are tired. C. The hard shoulder has a speed limit of 50 miles per hour. Or D. The hard shoulder is for emergency or breakdown use only. And let's start with our countdown. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... And the correct answer is D. The hard shoulder is for emergency or breakdown use only. A red cross above the hard shoulder shows that it's closed as a running lane and should only be used in case of emergencies or breakdowns. On a smart motorway, the hard shoulder may be used as a running lane at busy times, but obviously you will be informed of that. This will be shown by a mandatory speed limit on the gantry above the hard shoulder. Question number 46. What should you do if you begin to feel drowsy while you are driving? A. Close the car windows to help you concentrate. B. Continue with your, journey, with your journey, but drive more slowly. C. Stop and rest as soon as possible. Or D. Turn the heater up to keep you warm and comfortable. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is C. You need to stop and rest as soon as possible. You will be putting other road users at risk if you carry on driving when you feel drowsy. So please pull over and stop in a safe place so you can get some rest. Cafe caffeinated, caffeinated drinks and a short nap can temporarily help counter sleepiness. And if you are driving a long distance, think about finding some accommodation so you can rest for longer before you continue on your journey. Question number 47. Your car needs an MOT certificate. When is it legal to drive without an MOT certificate? A. Up to seven days after the old certificate has run out. B. When driving the car with the owner's permission. C. When driving to an MOT center to arrange an appointment or D, when driving to an appointment at an MOT center. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is D, when you are driving to an appointment at an MOT center. When a car is 3 years old, or four years old in Northern Ireland, he must pass an MOT test and have a valid MOT certificate before you can actually use the car on the road. Exceptionally, you may drive to a pre-arranged test appointment or to a garage for repairs required for the test. Drive or 
You may drive vehicles that are more than 40 years old without an MOT test, but they must be in roadworthy condition before being used on the road. If this is the case, please refer to gov.uk for more details. Question number 48. You take some cough medicine given to you by a friend. What should you do before driving your car? A. Ask your friend if taking the medicine affected their driving. B. Check the label to see if the medicine will affect your driving. C. Drink some strong coffee one hour before you drive. Or D. Drive a short distance to see if the medicine is affecting your driving. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And the correct answer is B. Check the label to see if the medicine will affect your driving. If you have taken any kind of medicine, never drive without first checking what the side effects might be. They might affect your judgment and perception and therefore endanger lives, yours and the other road users. Question number 49. What should you do if your, vehicles, if your vehicle pulls to one side when you use the brakes? A. Change gear and pump the brake pedal. B. Have the brakes checked as soon as possible. C. Increase the pressure in your tires. Or D. Use your parking brake at the same time. 5, 4, 3, Two, one, and the correct answer is B. You need to have your brakes checked as soon as possible. The brakes on your vehicle, they must be effective and properly adjusted. If your vehicle pulls to one side when you are driving, you need to take it to be checked by a qualified mechanic as soon as you can. And our last question for the day is this. Where would you find these flashing red light signals? A. Level crossings B. Motorway exits C. Pelican crossings or D. Zebra crossings And our last countdown for today starts now 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 And the correct answer is A level crossings. These signals are found at level crossings, swing or lifting bridges, some airfields and emergency access sites. The flashing red light means stop whether or not the way seems to be clear. And with this we got to the end of our video. I hope that these uh, questions were helpful to you. Please take care, stay safe and I will see you in our next video and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Bye! 1. Why are these yellow lines painted across the road? To help you choose the correct lane. To help you keep the correct separation distance. To make you aware of your speed. To tell you the distance to the roundabout. Correct answer. To make you aware of your speed. Explanation. These lines are often found on the approach to a roundabout or a dangerous junction. They give you extra warning to adjust your speed. Look well ahead and do this in good time. 2. What type of vehicle could you expect to meet in the middle of the road? Bicycle. Car. Lorry. Motorcycle. Correct answer. Lorry. Explanation. The highest point of the bridge is in the center, so a large vehicle might have to move to the center of the road to have enough room to pass safely under the bridge. 3. Where would you see this sign? At playground areas. At the side of the road. In the window of a car taking children to school.
On the rear of a school bus or coach. Correct answer. On the rear of a school bus or coach. Explanation. Vehicles that are used to carry children to and from school will be traveling at busy times of the day. If you're following a vehicle with this sign, be prepared for it to make frequent stops. It might pick up or set down passengers in places other than normal bus stops. 4. Which vehicles should use the left-hand lane on a three-lane motorway? Any vehicle that isn't overtaking. Emergency vehicles only. Large vehicles only. Slow vehicles only. Correct answer. Any vehicle that isn't overtaking. Explanation. On a motorway, all traffic should use the left-hand lane unless overtaking. When overtaking a number of slower vehicles, move back to the left-hand lane when you're safely passed. Check your mirrors frequently and don't stay in the middle or right-hand lane if the left-hand lane is free. 5. Your vehicle breaks down on a motorway and you need to call for help. Why might it be better to use an emergency roadside telephone rather than a mobile phone? It allows easy location by the emergency services. It connects you to a local garage. Mobile phones don't work on motorways. Using a mobile phone will distract other drivers. Correct answer. It allows easy location by the emergency services. Explanation. On a motorway, it's best to use a roadside emergency telephone so that the emergency services are able to find you easily. The location of the nearest telephone is shown by an arrow on marker posts at the edge of the hard shoulder. If you use a mobile, find out the number on the nearest marker post before you call. This number will let the operator know where you are and in which direction you're traveling. 6. When should you use the right-hand lane of a three-lane dual carriageway? When you're overtaking only. When you're overtaking or turning right. When you're turning right only. When you're using cruise control. Correct answer. When you're overtaking or turning right. Explanation. You should normally use the left-hand lane on any dual carriageway unless you're overtaking or turning right. When overtaking on a dual carriageway, look for vehicles ahead that are turning right. They may be slowing or stopped. You need to see them in good time so that you can take appropriate action. 7. Where may you overtake on a one-way street? On either the right or the left. Only on the left-hand side. Only on the right-hand side. Overtaking isn't allowed. Correct answer. On either the right or the left. Explanation. You can overtake other traffic on either side when traveling in a one-way street. Make full use of your mirrors and ensure it's clear all around before you attempt to overtake. Look for signs and road markings, and use the most suitable lane for your destination. 8. Who is authorized to signal you to stop? A bus driver. A motorcyclist. A pedestrian. A police officer. Correct answer. A police officer. Explanation. You must obey signals to stop given by police and traffic officers traffic wardens, and school crossing patrols. Failure to do so is an offense and could lead to prosecution. 9. Which type of sign tells you what you must not do? A. B. C. D. Correct answer, A. Explanation. Signs in the shape of a circle give orders. A sign with a red circle means that you aren't allowed to do something. Study know your traffic signs to ensure that you understand what the different traffic signs mean. 10. What does this sign mean? Cars and motorcycles only. Clearway, 
No stopping. No motor vehicles. No overtaking. Correct answer. No motor vehicles. Explanation. A sign will indicate which types of vehicles are prohibited from certain roads. Make sure that you know which signs apply to the vehicle you're using. 11. Where would you see a contraflow bus lane? On a dual carriageway. On a one-way street. On a roundabout. On an urban motorway. Correct answer. On a one-way street. Explanation. The traffic permitted to use a contraflow lane travels in the opposite direction to traffic in the other lanes on the road. 12. What does this traffic sign mean? Danger ahead. Service area ahead. Slippery road ahead. Tires liable to punctures ahead. Correct answer. Danger ahead. Explanation. This sign is there to alert you to the likelihood of danger ahead. It may be accompanied by a plate indicating the type of hazard. Be ready to reduce your speed and take avoiding action. 13. What does this sign mean? Change to the left-hand lane. Contraflow system. Leave at the next exit. One-way street. Correct answer. Contraflow system. Explanation. If you use the right-hand lane in a contraflow system, you'll be traveling with no permanent barrier between you and the oncoming traffic. Observe speed limits and keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. 14. At traffic lights, what does it mean when the amber light shows on its own? Go if no pedestrians are crossing. Go if the way is clear. Prepare to go. Stop at the stop line. Correct answer. Stop at the stop line. Explanation. When the amber light is showing on its own, the red light will follow next. The amber light means stop, unless you've already crossed the stop line or you're so close to it that stopping may cause a collision. 15. What does this road marking mean? Don't cross the line. No overtaking allowed. No stopping allowed. You're approaching a hazard. Correct answer. You're approaching a hazard. Explanation. A single broken line along the center of the road, with long markings and short gaps, is a hazard warning line. Don't cross it unless you can see that the road is clear well ahead. 16. How will a police officer in a patrol vehicle signal for you to stop? Flash the headlights, indicate left and point to the left. Overtake and give a slowing down arm signal. Pull alongside you, use the siren and wave you to stop. Use the siren, overtake, cut in front and stop. Correct answer. Flash the headlights. Indicate left and point to the left. Explanation. You must obey signals given by the police. If a police officer in a patrol vehicle wants you to pull over, they'll indicate this without causing danger to you or other traffic. 17. Where can you find reflective amber studs on a motorway? On the left-hand edge of the road. On the right-hand edge of the road. Separating the lanes. Separating the slip road from the motorway. Correct answer. On the right-hand edge of the road. Explanation. At night or in poor visibility, reflective studs on the road help you to judge your position on the carriageway. 18. What does this sign mean? End of motorway. End of restriction. Free recovery ends. Lane ends ahead. Correct answer. End of restriction. Explanation. Temporary restrictions on motorways are shown on signs that have flashing amber lights. At the end of the restriction, you'll see this sign without any flashing lights. 
19. When should tire pressures be checked? After any lengthy journey. After traveling at high speed. When tires are cold. When tires are hot. Correct answer, when tires are cold. Explanation, check the tire pressures when the tires are cold. This will give you a more accurate reading. The heat generated on a long journey will raise the pressure inside the tire. 20. How should you dispose of a used vehicle battery? Bury it in your garden. Leave it on wasteland. Put it in the dustbin. Take it to a local authority disposal site. Correct answer. Take it to a local authority disposal site. Explanation. Batteries contain acid, which is hazardous, and they must be disposed of safely. This means taking them to an appropriate disposal site. 21. What's most likely to increase fuel consumption? Accelerating around bends. Harsh braking and accelerating. Poor steering control. Staying in high gears. Correct answer. Harsh braking and accelerating. Explanation. Accelerating and braking gently and smoothly will help to save fuel and reduce wear on your vehicle. This makes it better for the environment too. 22. You're approaching a crossroads. What should you do if the traffic lights have failed? Be prepared to brake sharply to a stop. Be prepared to stop for any traffic. Brake and stop only for large vehicles. Brake sharply to a stop before looking. Correct answer. Be prepared to stop for any traffic. Explanation. When approaching a junction where the traffic lights have failed, you should proceed with caution. Treat the situation as an unmarked junction and be prepared to stop. 23. You're in a line of traffic. What action should you take if the driver behind is following very closely? Ignore the driver behind and continue to travel within the speed limit. Move over to a position just left of the center line of the road. Signal left and wave the driver behind to come past. Slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front. Correct answer, slow down, gradually increasing the gap between you and the vehicle in front. Explanation. If the driver behind is following too closely, there's a danger they'll collide with the back of your vehicle if you stop suddenly. You can reduce this risk by slowing down and increasing the safety margin in front of you. This reduces the chance that you'll have to stop suddenly and allows you to spread your braking over a greater distance. This is an example of defensive driving. 24. What hazard should you be aware of when traveling along the street? Children running out between vehicles. Glare from the sun. Lack of road markings. Large goods vehicles. Correct answer. Children running out between vehicles. Explanation. On roads where there are many parked vehicles, you might not be able to see children between parked cars and they may run out into the road without looking. 25. Which vehicles are prohibited from using the motorway? Cars with automatic transmission. Double-deck buses. Motorcycles over 50 cubic centimeters. Powered mobility scooters. Correct answer. Powered mobility scooters. Explanation. Motorways mustn't be used by pedestrians, cyclists, motorcycles under 50 cubic centimeters, certain slow-moving vehicles without permission, and powered wheelchairs mobility scooters. 26. You see this amber traffic light ahead. Which light, or lights, will come on next? Green alone. Green and amber together. 
Red alone. Red and amber together. Correct answer, red alone. Explanation. At junctions controlled by traffic lights, you must stop behind the white line until the lights change to green. A red light, an amber light, and red and amber lights showing together all mean stop. You may proceed when the light is green unless your exit road is blocked or pedestrians are crossing in front of you. If you're approaching traffic lights that are visible from a distance and the light has been green for some time, be ready to slow down and stop, because the lights are likely to change. 27. What does this sign mean? Hump bridge. Low bridge. Traffic calming hump. Uneven road. Correct answer, hump bridge. Explanation, you'll need to slow down. At hump bridges, your view ahead will be restricted and the road will often be narrow. If the bridge is very steep, sound your horn to warn others of your approach. Going over the bridge too fast is highly dangerous to other road users and could even cause your wheels to leave the road, with a resulting loss of control. 28. What does this sign mean? Direction to bus and coach park. Direction to park and ride car park. No parking for buses or coaches. Parking area for cars and coaches. Correct answer, direction to park and ride car park. Explanation, to ease the congestion in town centers, some cities and towns provide park and ride schemes. These allow you to park in a designated area and ride by bus into the center park and ride schemes are usually cheaper and easier than car parking in the town center. 29. Why should you test your brakes after this hazard? You'll be going down a long hill. You'll be on a slippery road. You'll have just crossed a long bridge. Your brakes will be wet. Correct answer, your brakes will be wet. Explanation, a ford is a crossing over a stream that's shallow enough to drive or ride through. After you've gone through a ford or deep puddle, your brakes will be wet and they won't work as well as usual. To dry them out, apply a light brake pressure while moving slowly. Don't travel at normal speeds until you're sure your brakes are working properly again. 30. You're traveling on a motorway in England. When must you stop your vehicle? When signaled to stop by a driver who has broken down. When signaled to stop by a pedestrian on the hard shoulder. When signaled to stop by a roadwork supervisor. When signaled to stop by a traffic officer. Correct answer, when signaled to stop by a traffic officer. Explanation, you'll find traffic officers on motorways and some primary routes in England and Wales. They work in partnership with the police, helping to keep traffic moving and helping to make your journey as safe as possible. It's an offence not to comply with the directions given by a traffic officer. 31. Who may use two cam crossings? Cyclists and pedestrians. Motorcyclists and cyclists. Motorcyclists and pedestrians. Only cyclists. Correct answer, cyclists and pedestrians. Explanation. There are some crossings where cycle routes lead cyclists to cross at the same place as pedestrians. These are called two-cam crossings. Always look out for cyclists, as they are likely to be approaching faster than pedestrians. 32. Which sign means there will be two-way traffic crossing your route ahead? A. B. C. D. Correct answer, B. Explanation, this sign is found in or at the end of a one-way system. It warns you that traffic will be crossing your path from both directions. 33. 
Which sign means turn left ahead? A. B. C. D. Correct answer, B. Explanation. Blue circles tell you what you must do and this sign gives a clear instruction to turn left ahead. You should be looking out for signs at all times and know what they mean. 34. At an incident, a casualty is unconscious but breathing. When should you move them? When an ambulance is on its way. When bystanders offer to help you. When bystanders tell you to move them. When there's a risk of further danger. Correct answer, when there's a risk of further danger. Explanation, don't move a casualty unless there's further danger, for example, from other traffic or fire. They may have unseen or internal injuries. Moving them unnecessarily could cause further injury. Don't remove a motorcyclist's helmet unless it's essential. 35. What does it mean if this light comes on while you're driving? A fault in the braking system. A rear light has failed. The engine oil is low. Your seat belt isn't fastened. Correct answer. A fault in the braking system. Explanation. If this light comes on, you should have the brake system checked immediately. A faulty braking system could have dangerous consequences. 36. You're about to start a journey in freezing weather. What part of your vehicle should you clear of ice and snow? The aerial. The boot. The bumper. The windows. Correct answer. The windows. Explanation. Driving in bad weather increases your risk of having a collision. If you absolutely have to travel, clear your lights, mirrors, number plates and windows of any snow or ice, so that you can see and be seen. 37. You're driving in fog. Why should you keep well back from the vehicle in front? In case it changes direction suddenly. In case it stops suddenly. In case its brake lights dazzle you. In case its fog lights dazzle you. Correct answer. In case it stops suddenly. Explanation. If you're following another road user in fog, stay well back. The driver in front won't be able to see hazards until they're close and might need to brake suddenly. Also, the road surface is likely to be wet and could be slippery. 38. When should you use the left-hand lane of a motorway? When the road ahead is clear. When you're making a phone call. When you're overtaking slower traffic in the other lanes. When your vehicle breaks down. Correct answer. When the road ahead is clear. Explanation. You should drive in the left-hand lane whenever possible. Only use the other lanes for overtaking or when directed to do so by signals. Using other lanes when the left-hand lane is empty can frustrate drivers behind you. 39. You're driving a vehicle that has anti-lock brakes. How should you apply the foot brake when you need to stop in an emergency? Rapidly and firmly. Rapidly and gently. Slowly and gently. Slowly but firmly. Correct answer, rapidly and firmly. Explanation, you may have to stop in an emergency due to a misjudgment by another driver or a hazard arising suddenly, such as a child running out into the road. If your vehicle has anti-lock brakes, you should apply the brakes immediately and keep them firmly applied until you stop. 40. Why should you switch off your rear fog lights when the fog has cleared? To allow your headlights to work. To prevent dazzling drivers behind. To stop draining the battery. To stop the engine losing power. Correct answer. To prevent dazzling drivers behind.
Explanation. Don't forget to switch off your fog lights when the weather improves. You could be prosecuted for driving with them on in good visibility. The high intensity of rear fog lights can dazzle drivers behind and make your brake lights difficult to notice. 41. You're driving on a wet road. What should you do if you have to stop your vehicle in an emergency? Apply the parking brake and foot brake together. Give an arm signal. Keep both hands on the steering wheel. Select reverse gear. Correct answer. Keep both hands on the steering wheel. Explanation. As you drive, look well ahead and all around so that you're ready for any hazards that might develop. If you have to stop in an emergency, react as soon as you can while keeping control of the vehicle. Keep both hands on the steering wheel so you can control the vehicle's direction of travel. 42. What's the safest thing to do if you have to leave valuables in your car? Lock them out of sight. Park near a bus stop. Park near a school entrance. Put them in a carrier bag. Correct answer. Lock them out of sight. Explanation. If you have to leave valuables in your car, lock them out of sight. This is the best way to deter an opportunist thief. 43. You're approaching a zebra crossing. What should you do if pedestrians are waiting to cross? Give way to older and infirm people only. Slow down and prepare to stop. Use your headlights to indicate they can cross. Wave at them to cross the road. Correct answer. Slow down and prepare to stop. Explanation. As you approach a zebra crossing, look for pedestrians waiting to cross. Where you can see them, slow down and prepare to stop. Be especially careful of children and older people, who may have difficulty judging when it's safe to cross. 44. You need glasses to read a vehicle number plate at the required distance. When must you wear them? Only at night time. Only in bad weather conditions. When you think it's necessary. Whenever you're driving. Correct answer, whenever you're driving. Explanation, have your eyesight tested before you start your practical training. Then, throughout your driving life, have checks periodically, as your vision may change. 45. When may you stop on an urban clearway? To ask for directions. To load or unload goods. To set down and pick up passengers. To use a mobile telephone. Correct answer. To set down and pick up passengers. Explanation. Urban clearways have their times of operation clearly signed. You may only stop to pick up or set down passengers. 46. When do windscreen pillars cause a serious obstruction to your view? When you're approaching a one-way street. When you're approaching bends and junctions. When you're driving on a dual carriageway. When you're driving on a motorway. Correct answer, when you're approaching bends and junctions. Explanation, windscreen pillars can obstruct your view, particularly at bends and junctions. Look out for other road users, especially cyclists, motorcyclists, and pedestrians who can easily be overlooked. 47. The road outside this school is marked with yellow zigzag lines. What do these lines mean? You may park on the lines when dropping off school children. You may park on the lines when picking up school children. You must stay with your vehicle if you park here. You shouldn't wait or park your vehicle here. Correct answer. You shouldn't wait or park your vehicle here. Explanation. Parking here would block other road users' view of the school entrance and would endanger the lives of children on their way to and from school. 48. 
Which lights should you use when you're driving in a tunnel? Dipped headlights. Front spotlights. Rear fog lights. Side lights. Correct answer. Dipped headlights. Explanation. Before entering a tunnel, you should switch on your dipped headlights, as this will allow you to see and be seen. In many tunnels, it's a legal requirement. Don't wear sunglasses while you're driving in a tunnel. 49. What should you do if the traffic in the left-hand lane is slowing? Accelerate past the vehicles in the left-hand lane. Move across and continue in the right-hand lane. Pull up on the left-hand verge. Slow down, keeping a safe separation distance. Correct answer, slow down, keeping a safe separation distance. Explanation, allow the traffic to merge into the left-hand lane. Leave enough room so that you can maintain a safe separation distance, even if vehicles pull in ahead of you. 50. What does it mean if your insurance policy has an excess of £500? The insurance company will pay the first £500 of any claim. You'll be paid £500 if you don't claim within one year. You'll have to pay the first £500 of the cost of any claim. Your vehicle is insured for a value of £500 if it's stolen. Correct answer. You'll have to pay the first £500 of the cost of any claim. Explanation. Having an excess on your policy will help to keep the premium down. However, if you make a claim, you'll have to pay the excess yourself in this case, £500. Hey guys, today we have another driving test with 50 questions. You have multiple answer choice and there is only one correct answer to each question and I'll also be giving you the explanations to the correct answer. And yeah, I think we are ready to go. Let's have a look at question number one. What must you do when the amber light is flashing at a pelican crossing? A. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. B. Give way to pedestrians waiting to cross. C. Stop and wait for the green light. Or D. Stop and wait for the red light. And the correct answer is... A. Give way to pedestrians already on the crossing. Pelican crossings are signal controlled crossings operated by pedestrians. Push button controls change the signals. Pelican crossings have no red and amber stage before green. Instead, they have a flashing amber light. This means that you must give way to pedestrians who are on the crossing, but if the crossing is clear, you can continue. Question number two. What will reduce fuel consumption? A. Accelerating rapidly B. Driving more slowly C. Late and heavy braking Or D. Staying in lower gears And the correct answer is B. Driving more slowly Harsh braking, frequent gear changes and harsh acceleration increase fuel consumption. A car uses less fuel when traveling at a constant low speed in an appropriate high gear. You need to look well ahead so that you are able to anticipate any, to anticipate any kind of hazards early. Easing off the accelerator and timing your approach at junctions, for example, can reduce the fuel consumption of your car. Next question. 
You are going to turn left from a main road into a minor road. What should you do as you approach the junction? Please have a look at the image on your screens. A. You should keep in the middle of the road. B. Keep just left of the middle of the road. C. Keep well to the left of the road. Or D. Swing out to the right just before turning. And the correct answer is C. Keep well to the left of the road. Your road position can help other road users to anticipate your actions. So keep to the left as you approach a left turn and don't swing out into the center of the road in order to make the turn easier. This could in fact endanger oncoming traffic and could cause other road users to misunderstand what you are planning to do. Question number four. When may you drive over a pavement? A. If there are no pedestrians nearby. B. To gain access to a property. C. To overtake slow-moving traffic. Or D. When the pavement is very wide. And the correct answer is B. To gain access to a property. It's illegal to drive on or over a pavement except if you want to gain access to a property. If you need to cross a pavement, you need to give priority to any pedestrians. Question number five. How should you drive when you are driving along a road which has road humps? A. Accelerate quickly between the humps. B. Always keep to the maximum legal speed. C. Drive slowly at school times only. Or D. Maintain a reduced speed throughout. And the correct answer is D. Maintain a reduced speed throughout. Road humps are there for a specific reason, to protect vulnerable road users by reducing the speed of traffic. So please don't accelerate harshly between the humps. Put the safety of others first and maintain a reduced speed throughout the zone. Next question. Where would you find these road markings? Please have a look at the picture on your screen. A. At a mini roundabout. B. At a railway crossing. C. On a motorway. Or D. On a pedestrian crossing. The correct answer is A. At a mini roundabout. These markings show the direction in which the traffic should go at a mini roundabout. Next question. How can you plan your route before you start a long journey? A. Ask your local garage. B. Check your vehicle handbook. C. Consult a travel agent. Or D. Use a route planner on the internet. And the correct answer is use a route planner on the internet. So option D. Various route planners are available on the internet. Most of them will give you several options which would allow you to choose between the most direct route and quieter roads. They could also identify rest and fuel stops. So, please print off the directions and take these directions with you. Next question. 
Why should you check the information leaflet before taking any kind of medication? A. Drug companies want customer feedbacks on their products. B. Some types of medicine can affect your ability to drive safely. C. The medicine you take may affect your hearing. Or D. You may have to let your insurance company know about the medicine. And the correct answer is B. Some types of medicine can affect your ability to drive safely. Always check the label or the information leaflet for any medication you take. The medicine could affect your driving. If you are not sure, ask your doctor or a pharmacist. Next question. Which of these diagrams shows a hazard warning line? A, B, C, or D? And the correct answer is A, diagram A. You need to know the difference between a normal center line and a hazard warning line. If there is a hazard ahead, the markings are longer and the gaps are shorter. This gives you advance warning of an unspecified hazard. Question number 10. What must you have when you apply to renew your vehicle tax? A. A valid driving license. B. The handbook. C. The vehicle chassis number. Or D. Valid insurance. And the correct answer is D. Valid insurance. You can renew your vehicle tax online at post offices and by phone using the DVLA vehicle tax service. When you apply, make sure that you have all the relevant valid documents, including a valid MOT test certificate where applicable. Next question. What type of vehicle displays this yellow sign? A, a broken down vehicle. B, a private ambulance, C, a school bus, or D, an ice cream van. And the correct answer is C, a school bus. Buses which carry children to and from school may stop at places other than scheduled bus stops. So be aware because they might pull over at any time to allow children to get on the bus or off the bus. This will normally be when traffic is heavy during rush hour. Next question. A police car is following you. What should you do if the police officer flashes the headlights and points to the left? A. Move over to the left. B. Pull up on the left. C. Stop immediately. Or D. Turn left at the next junction. And the correct answer is B. Pull up on the left. You must pull up on the left as soon as it's safe to do so and you must switch off your engine. Next question. Which arm signal tells you that the car you are following is going to pull up? Signal A, signal B, signal C, or signal D? And the correct answer is signal D. There may be occasions when drivers need to give an arm signal to confirm their intentions. 
This could include in uh, bright sunshine at a complex road layout, when stopping at a pedestrian crossing or when turning right just after passing a parked vehicle. You should understand what each arm signal means. If you give arm signals, make them clear, correct and decisive. Next question. You are traveling along a residential street. There are parked vehicles on the left hand side. Why should you keep your speed down? A. Children may run out from between the vehicles. B. So that oncoming traffic can see you more clearly. C. There may be delivery lorries on the street. Or D. You may set off car alarms. And the correct answer is A. Children may run out from between the vehicles. Travel slowly and carefully near parked vehicles. Beware of cars pulling out, especially bikes and motorbikes, pedestrians, especially children who may run out from between cars or are the drivers opening their doors. Question number 15. What will affect your vehicle's stopping distance? A. The condition of the tires. B. The speed limit. C. The street lighting. Or D. The time of day. And the correct answer is A. The condition of the tires. Having tires correctly inflated and in good condition will ensure they have maximum grip on the road. How well your tires grip the road has a significant effect on your car's stopping distance. Next question. When will you feel the effects of engine braking? A. When you change to a higher gear. B. When you change to a lower gear. C. When you only use the parking brake. Or D. When you are in neutral. And the correct answer is B. When you change to a lower gear. When you take your foot off the accelerator, engines have a natural resistance to turn caused mainly by the cylinder compression. Changing to a lower gear requires the engine to turn faster and so it will have greater resistance than when it's made to turn more slowly. When going downhill, changing to a lower gear will therefore help to keep the vehicle's speed in check. Next question. You are driving on an icy road. What distance from the car in front should you drive? A. 8 times the normal distance B. 4 times the normal distance C. 6 times the normal distance or D. 10 times the normal distance And the correct answer is D. 10 times the normal distance. Don't travel in icy or snowy weather unless your journey is essential. Drive extremely carefully when roads are or may be icy. Stopping distances can be 10 times greater than on dry roads. Next question. What action should you take when you see flashing amber lights under a school warning sign? A. Increase your speed to clear the area quickly. B. Keep up your speed and sound the horn. C. Reduce your speed until you are clear of the area. Or D. Wait at the lights until they stop flashing. And the correct answer is C. Reduce your speed until you are clear of the area. 
the flashing amber lights are switched on to warn you that children may be crossing near a school. Slow down and take extra care as you may need to stop. Next question. Why should you make sure that your indicators are cancelled after turning at the junction? A. To avoid the damage to the indicator relay. B. To avoid dazzling other road users. C. To avoid flattening the battery. Or D. To avoid misleading other road users. And the correct answer is D. To avoid misleading other road users. Leaving your indicators on could confuse other road users and may even lead to a crash. Be aware that if you haven't turned sharply, your indicators may not self-cancel and you will need to turn them off manually. Question number 20. On a three-lane motorway, which lane should you use if there is no traffic ahead? A. The center lane. B. Either the right or the center lane. C. The left lane. Or D. The right lane. And the correct answer is C. The left lane. On a three-lane motorway, you should travel in the left-hand lane unless you are overtaking. This applies regardless of the speed at which you are traveling. Next question. What should you do when you are unsure if it's safe to reverse your car? A. Get out of the car and check. B. Rev your engine. C. Reverse slowly. Or D. Sound your horn. And the correct answer is... A. Get out of the car and check. A small child could be hidden directly behind you, so if you can't see, so if you can't see all around your vehicle, you need to get out and have a look. You could also ask someone reliable outside the vehicle to guide you. Next question. Why are vehicle mirrors often slightly curved or convex? A. They give a wider field of vision. B. They make it easier to judge the speed of the traffic behind. C. They make the traffic behind look bigger. Or D. They totally cover blind spots. And the correct answer is... A. They give a wider field of vision. Although a convex mirror gives a wide view of the scene behind, of the scene behind, you should be aware that it won't show you everything behind or to the side of your car. Before you move off, you will need to look over your shoulder to check for anything which is not visible in the mirrors. Next question. For how long is an MOT certificate normally valid? A. 10,000 miles B. 30,000 miles C. One year after the date it was issued or D. Three years after the date it was issued And the correct answer is C. One year after the date it was issued Some garages will remind you that your car is due for its annual MOT test, but not all of them do. To ensure continuous cover, you may take your vehicle for its MOT up to one month before the existing MOT certificate expires. The expiry date on the new certificate will be 12 months after the expiry date on the old certificate. Next question. 
when is fuel consumption at its highest? A. When you are accelerating. B. When you are braking. C. When you are coasting. Or D. When you are turning sharply. And the correct answer is... A, when you are accelerating. Accelerating uses a lot of fuel, so always try to use the accelerator smoothly. Taking your foot off the accelerator allows the momentum of the car to take you forward, especially when you are going downhill. This can save a considerable amount of fuel without any loss of control over your car. Question number 25. What restrictions apply if you are towing a trailer on a three-lane motorway? A. You must have a stabilizer fitted. B. You must not exceed 50 miles per hour. C. You must not overtake. Or D. You must not use the right-hand lane. And the correct answer is D. You must not use the right-hand lane. The motorway regulations for towing a trailer states that you must not use the right-hand lane of a three-lane motorway unless you, are direct, unless you are directed to do that. For example, if there are any roadworks or a lane closure, and also, you must not exceed 60 miles per hour. Next question. What does this sign mean? A. Motorway control flow system ahead. B. Traffic approaching you has priority. C. Two-way traffic crosses a one-way road. Or D, two-way traffic straight ahead. And the correct answer is D, two-way traffic straight ahead. This sign may be at the end of a dual carriageway or a one-way street. It's the, the sign is there to warn you of oncoming traffic. Next question. A cycle lane marked by a solid white line is in operation. What does this mean for car drivers? A. They may drive in the lane at any time. B. They may park in the lane. C. They may use the lane when necessary. Or D. They must not drive along the lane. And the correct answer is D. They must not drive along the lane. While it's in operation, other vehicles must not use this part of the carriageway except to pick up or to drop off passengers. At other times, when the lane isn't in operation, you should still be aware that there may be cyclists using the lane. Give them plenty of room as you pass and allow for their movement from side to side, especially in windy weather or on a bumpy road. Next question. Where is your vehicle most likely to be affected by side winds? A on a busy stretch of road, B, on a long straight road, C, on a narrow country lane, or D, on an open stretch of road. And the correct answer is D, on an open stretch of road. In windy conditions, you need to be careful 
on exposed roads. A strong gust of wind can blow you off course. Watch out for other road users who are particularly likely to be affected, such as cyclists, motorcyclists, high-sided lorries, and vehicles towing trailers. Next question. Why would you fit chains to your wheels? A. To help prevent damage to the road surface. B. To help prevent skidding in deep snow. C. To help prevent the brakes locking. Or D. To help prevent wear to the tires. And the correct answer is B. To help prevent skidding in deep snow. Chains can be fitted to your wheels in snowy conditions. They can help you to move off without wheel spin or to keep moving in deep snow. You will still need to adjust your driving to suit these conditions. Question number 30. How can driving in a fuel-efficient manner help protect the environment? A. By increasing the number of cars on the road. B. By reducing exhaust emissions. C. Through increased fuel bills. Or D. Through the legal enforcement of speed regulations. And the correct answer is B. By reducing exhaust emissions. Fuel-efficient driving is all about looking and planning further ahead. This helps raise your hazard awareness and reduces the need for late and heavy braking. This will make your journeys more comfortable as well as considerably reducing your fuel bills and reducing emissions that can damage the environment. Next question. You are traveling along a motorway. Where would you find a crawler or climbing lane? A. Along the hard shoulder. B. Before a junction. C. Before a service area. Or D. On a steep gradient. And the correct answer is D. On a steep gradient. Large, slow-moving vehicles can hinder the progress of other traffic. On a steep gradient, an extra crawler lane may be provided for slow-moving vehicles to allow faster-moving traffic to flow more easily. Next question. What shape is a stop sign? Shape A, shape B, Shape C or shape D? And the correct answer is shape D. To make it easy to recognize, the stop sign is the only sign of this shape. You must stop and take effective observation before moving further. Next question. In winter, road signs can become covered by snow. What does this sign mean? A. Crossroads. B. Give way. C. Stop. Or D. Turn right. And the correct answer is C. Stop. The stop sign is the only road sign which is octagonal. This is so that it can be recognized and obeyed even if it's obscured, for example, like in this image, by snow. Next question. What does this arm signal mean? A. The driver intends to turn left. B. The driver intends to turn right. C. The driver is slowing down. 
or D, the driver wishes to overtake? And the correct answer is A, the driver intends to turn left. There might be an occasion where another driver will use an arm signal. This could be because the vehicle's indicators are obscured by other traffic. For such signals to be effective, all drivers should know their meaning. Be aware that the left turn signal might look like the, might look like the slowing down signal. Question number 35. Which sign means that the national speed limit applies? Sign A, sign B, sign C, or sign D? And the correct answer is sign D. You should know the speed limit for the road on each for the road on which you are traveling and the vehicle that you're driving. The different speed limits are shown in the highway code. Next question. The fluid level in your battery is low. What fluid should you use to top it up? A. Battery acid. B. Distilled water. C. Engine coolant or D. Engine oil? And the correct answer is B. Distilled water. Some modern batteries are maintenance free, so please check your vehicle handbook and if you need to, make sure that the plates in each battery cell are covered with fluid. Next question. What should you do when going through a contraflow system on a motorway? A. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. B. Stay close to the vehicle ahead to reduce any cues. C. Switch lanes to keep the traffic flowing or D. Use dipped headlights. And the correct answer is A. Keep a good distance from the vehicle ahead. At roadworks and, um, road and especially where a contraflow system is operating, a speed restriction is likely to be in place. Keep to the lower speed limit and don't switch lanes or get too close to the vehicle in front of you. Be aware that there will be no permanent barrier between you and the, and the oncoming traffic. Next question. How can you reduce the environmental harm caused by a motor vehicle? A. Don't service it. B. Drive faster than normal. C. Keep engine revs low. Or D. Only use your car for short journeys. And the correct answer is keep engine revs low. Engines that burn fossil fuels produce exhaust emissions which are harmful to health. The harder you make the engine work, the more emissions it will produce. Engines also use more fuel and they produce higher levels of emissions when they are cold. Anything you can do to reduce your use of fossil fuels will help the environment. Next question. When would you use the right-hand lane on a three-lane motorway? A. When you are driving above the speed limit. B. When you are overtaking. C. When you are trying to save fuel. Or D. When you are turning right. 
And the correct answer is B, when you are overtaking. The right hand lane of the motorway is for overtaking. Sometimes you may be directed into a right hand lane because of roadworks or a traffic incident. This will be indicated by signs or officers directing the traffic. Question number 40. You are on a smart motorway. What does it mean when a red cross is displayed above the hard shoulder? A. Pull up in this lane to answer your mobile phone. B. This lane can be used if you need a rest. C. Use this lane as a running lane. Or D. You should not travel in this lane. And the correct answer is D. You should not travel in this lane. Some motorways have been redesigned as smart motorways. At certain times, the hard shoulder will be open as a running lane. However, a red cross above the hard shoulder shows that it isn't open as a running lane and should only be used for emergencies and breakdowns. Next question. Where would it be unsafe to overtake? A. Approaching a junction. B. On a one-way street. C. On a single carriageway. Or D. Traveling up a long hill. And the correct answer is approaching a junction. You should overtake only when it's necessary and only when you can see it's clear ahead. Look out for road signs and markings that show it's illegal or would be unsafe to overtake, such as approaching junctions or bends. In many cases, overtaking is unlikely to significantly improve your journey time. Next question. Which sign shows that you are entering a one-way system? Sign A, sign B, sign C, or sign D. And the correct answer is sign B. If the road has two lanes, you can, you can use either lane and overtake on either side. Use the lane which is more convenient for your destination unless signs or road markings indicate otherwise. Next question. What's the speed limit for a car towing a caravan on a dual carriageway? A, 40 miles per hour, B, 50 miles per hour, C, 60 miles per hour, or D, 70 miles per hour. And the correct answer is C, 60 miles per hour. The speed limit for cars towing caravans or trailers on dual carriageways or motorways is 60 miles per hour. Due to the increased weight and size of the combination, you should plan further ahead. Take care in windy weather as a strong side wind, side wind can make a caravan or a large trailer unstable. Next question. You are driving along a country road and you see this sign, the sign on your screen. What should you do after dealing safely with the hazard? A. Accelerate briskly. B. Check your tire pressures. C. Switch on your hazard warning lights. Or D. Test your brakes. And the correct answer is D. Test your brakes. If your brakes have been thoroughly soaked, 
you should check that they are working properly before you build up speed again. Before you do this, please remember to check your mirrors and consider what's behind you. Question number 45. What should you do if your vehicle pulls to one side when you use the brakes? A. Change gear and pump the brake pedal. B. Have the brakes checked as soon as possible. C. Increase the pressure in your tires. Or D. Use your parking brake at the same time. And the correct answer is B. Have the brakes checked as soon as possible. The brakes on your vehicle must be effective and properly adjusted. If your vehicle pulls to one side when you brake, you need to take it to be checked by a qualified mechanic as soon as possible. Next question. You are driving along a wet road. How can you tell if your vehicle's tires are losing their grip on the surface? A. The engine noise will increase. B. The engine will stall. C. The steering will feel very heavy. Or D. The steering will feel very light. And the correct answer is D. The steering will feel very light. If you drive at speed in very wet conditions, your steering may suddenly feel lighter than usual. This means that the tires have lifted off the surface of the road and they are floating on the surface of the water. This is known as aquaplaning. Reduce speed, but don't brake until your steering returns to normal. Next question. How does drinking alcohol affect your driving behavior? A. It improves judgment skills. B. It increases concentration. C. It increases confidence. Or D. It leads to faster reactions. And the correct answer is C. It increases confidence. Alcohol can increase confidence to a point where your driving behavior might become out of character. Sensible behavior might change to risk-taking behavior. So never let yourself or your friends get into this situation. Next question. What should you do when you are approaching traffic lights which have been green for some time? A. Accelerate hard. B. Be ready to stop. C. Brake hard. Or D. Maintain your speed. And the correct answer is B. Be ready to stop. The longer traffic lights have been green, the sooner they will change. Allow for this as you approach traffic lights that you know have been green for a while. They are likely to change soon, so you should be prepared to stop. Next question. You are waiting to emerge from a junction. The windscreen pillar is restricting your view. What should you be particularly aware of? A. Buses, B. Coaches, C. Lorries, or D. Motorcyclists? And the correct answer is D. Motorcyclists. Windscreen pillars can completely block your view of pedestrians, motorcyclists, and cyclists. You should make a particular effort to look for these road users and don't just rely on a quick glance. Question number 50 and our last question for today, which is, 
You are driving a friend's children home from school. They are both under 14 years old. Who is responsible for making sure that the children wear a seat belt or an approved child restraint where required? A. An adult passenger. B. The children. C. You as the driver. Or D. Your friend. And the correct answer is C, you, the driver. Passengers should always be secured and safe. Children should be encouraged to fasten their seat belts or approve the restraints themselves from an early age so that it becomes a matter of routine. As the driver, you must check that they are fastened securely because this is your responsibility. And thank you guys so much for staying with me today. I will see you soon in the next one. For now, take care. Bye.